Taylor, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Good. Empress, how are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. We are excited to have both of y'all here just to come in a space. We're going to talk tonight. We got a special guest following in here soon. So Taylor, talk to me. Tell us about yourself. Give me the 411. You had an awesome interview last night. Was it last night? Yes, it was. My very first one. <laughs> How was it? Tell, tell me about it. Um, it was amazing. Well, first off, um, I go by Taylor. I'm on all, so, Taylor Umbridge on all social media platforms. Um, so if you're looking for me in any other space, that's how you're going to find me. Um, I'm actually a mother of four. Um, and I've been watching the YSL trial from afar. Um, and so I wasn't really like heavily engaged with it for a while. Um, but I would just kind of check in with, I'm not a lawyer, but every now and then and kind of see what's really going on. Um, and then one day I just had this urge to like react to some, to some things that I was listening to because I started actually watching the trial. Uh, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, post my reaction. Um, and immediately I, I feel like, you know, I, I instantly got, instantly got a little following. Um, and as I've been creating content for like the past week, week and a half or so, maybe two weeks, um, I actually, it's a lot of details within the case and I actually had names mixed up. I was confusing two people with the same name, Lil D, um, Demikian Garland, Garlington with, uh, Quandarius Zachary. And so, um, naturally, you know, people who, these are people lives that we're, that we're talking about. And so naturally having something wrong and it being reported out wrong from my family members, perspective it, it's a touchy subject and so um they got in the comments and they, they were not always nice about it uh at least at least a subset of folks they they weren't happy with me and so i was like you know what i don't think this is for me i think i'm gonna just chill out on this for a little bit uh but just his sister actually just reached out and was like hey um how can i get in contact with you and i'm like uh well, I have to go to, well you know what's up she's like well we want to go live and we want to talk about it and i'm like well social media is a weird place let's let me call you or you call me let's have a conversation so we got on the phone um we started talking and as soon as i heard dad in the background i said okay we got action um and so we we went live on tiktok last night and dad dropped some bombs <laughs> he dropped some bombs and i i, I want to say he broke the wise cell internet yeah it was like some things i was like wow with garlington and i was like wow this is about to be deep actually guys his um his sister is going to come up here in a couple of minutes and talk to us. Um, yeah. What an interesting thing. Empress, tell us, tell us about you. I know everyone knows you. What? No, everyone, everyone. does not know me. Okay. I do. <laughs> Um, I am a professional photographer and a designer, uh, but I also am an artist, but I've been following this case since December. Um, I started tuning in randomly on YouTube, like everybody else. Um, and I start following Miss Sylvia's page now, as everybody knows, Sylvia's actually in the courtroom. So I was able to get a little more detail about, you know, what's going on versus a lot of the other pages that were, um, streaming or whatnot. And so just recently uh, seeing the, how putting all the pieces together with the way everything is going. My whole thing is it's not about what you've done. It's about what can be legally proven. And if you're going to push the law out there on other people, you should obey the law as well, even when you're trying to prosecute somebody. And so my whole issue with this whole thing is the prosecutorial misconduct. And I just, that just does not sit right in my soul. So that's why I'm so actively vocal about this. Yeah. You know, and, it's just, Taylor, it's just so much going on, a lot of cumulative evidence, you know, like this, to me, from a law student perspective, this trial has gotten way off the rails. Um, and I just feel bad, you know, like these boys are sitting here and just like a mess. It's just unprofessional. It's not what they teach us how to prosecute a case, not how they teach us sometimes how to defend a case. It's just all over the place. So it's always, you know. It's uh, it's very disheartening to me. Yeah. My big thing is I feel bad because I'm like, what about the people when I see the way the love and just the Fulton County in general, the way they operate? I always I'm always like, what about the people that can't afford an actual lawyer to go up against these individuals, a lawyer that's not willing to put in the same fight that Weinstein and Steele and uh, Shard and everybody has put in? I'm like, God dang, like I can only imagine going up against them and how they move and, you know, an unseasoned lawyer, a lawyer that's, like I said, not well invested, will put effort into calling out their BS the way that 
these defense attorneys have. And it just makes me feel so bad, so bad. I I 100 percent agree. And it's heartbreaking um, because, you know, I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. And um, just where I come, where I grew up at, like it wasn't I didn't grow up in the bad part because my mom made sure that we got we 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 had a way out. But I've got cousins. I got I've got relatives um, who've lived that type of lifestyle or who's been in the streets at some point in their life and has experienced um, the justice system as a, from a perspective that I would never want to. And so when you hear them talk about lot of things that kind of go on uh, with the justice system, you, you kind of like, I don't say you second guess it, but it just doesn't hit as hard. Um, and then turning around and watching it play out in this courtroom has been like, oh my God, um, I've got a cousin, he's a lawyer. Um, and I just recently seen him over like a past weekend or so. And we were talking about it. And he's like, this thing is crazy. He's like, I want to cut it off, but I can't. He's like, it's, it's so bad to watch, but I just can't stop looking at it because this is not what you do. This is everything you do not do. Um, just, you know, picking back off what you just said. So um, it's been interesting none, nonetheless. And I think that we are far from from seeing the worst. You know, and um, I know um, little these sisters up here, but it's just to me, it started with the ex parte. Right. The whole, you know, when people need to understand like the ex parte that it started with, people are not familiar with. It's called the indictment. That's the first ex parte. It's a private meeting. The prosecutor gets to choose with with, with their people. That's how an, an indictment starts is a prosecutor gets a group of people. You don't get the defense there and you sit back and you present your evidence only to indict people. And that's how they get around the whole prelim. Like if it, you know, that's, that's when they often say in law school, you can indict a ham sandwich. Like it's so easy because there's no defense. So whatever Fannie Willis or Adrian Love went in there to the grand jury and said about these guys, they believed they went in there. And that's how we get these charges. And then another ex parte with Judge Glanville. And then this week, I'm telling you, there was another ex parte about Little D to get the material warrant. They have to I meet with the judge ex parte. Go ahead, There's no way it wasn't. We saw that. We saw that break, and everybody head was on a swivel. Like, what is going on? I instantly, I said, uh oh. It's, I'm like we're going back at two o'clock and just this this whole week has been very telling, very, very telling. And it's like they know what they're doing, but they're almost so arrogant of it that they've been probably doing this for so long that they don't care because in their mind that nothing's going to happen to them because of their current positions. They, they're so arrogant and blatant about it. It's like, so, yeah, I know I'm doing this. And then the the fake, um, what do you call it when you act um when you act oblivious, the obliviousness to everything between the judge and the state is very like, yeah, we know y'all see us, but so what? <laughs> like, I don't, I don't understand. And I mentioned this earlier, just because like, there's not a lot of community leaders in my, there's not a leaders in my community that look like me. And so when I look at Atlanta, you know, I've always known Atlanta to be the place of black excellence. And when you see the type of, of people that are um, running the show right now it is is this hard and it breaks my heart because you know there's still kids down there in poverty looking around like I if I can't be like you who should I be like you know what I mean like I don't I don't feel like they're looking at the fact that this is bigger than this case you know what I mean yeah you know and um Taylor we're going to get into our conversation um with his sister in a second but think about from a law student perspective like I, I sit here and I don't see a lot of us in law schools for me, I had the opportunity to be at one of the top law schools in this country where there's not a lot of blacks, period. And then to sit back and see Adrian Love and just, you know, how she's conducting herself is disheartening to me. Like, is this what I'm getting my, my, myself into? Is this what I paid hundreds of thousand dollars to see somebody destroy? You know, it's, it's just crazy to me. Yeah, and I've, I'm not a law student yet, so I've taken the LSAT once um, back in June, and then I'm taking it again in November because I didn't like my score. But um, that's why my, my cousin, he's like, that is not how it works. It, it looks nothing like that. Like, go watch another case. If you're gonna if you're gonna watch cases, like, I don't want you to think that this is how it's gonna be. And so I I, I completely understand where you're coming from with that. Um, but Nay is up here, so hey, Nay girl. <laughs> hey guys. How are you, Nay? I'm good. The best you can be. I know this is a little rough time for you and your family. Yes. 
But, you know, um, I'll give you the floor. You know, take us into what's going on on the family side. You know, this is a little strange how this has come about so fast. Because to me, I thought watching this trial during the week, they just couldn't find your brother, didn't know where he was. The conversation I had with attorneys. But now all of a sudden, they knew they found your brother out of nowhere. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, that's what they say. <laughs> So basically, um, they did serve him a subpoena for 2023, it's around November, but it had expired because it was with Judge Granville. So he had been letting them know that, hey, I'm in and out the hospital, my health is a real issue with me, and he been, like, letting them know what's going on. But yesterday was, like, over the top. They went to the girlfriend job. She works on an army base. They're handcuffing her, going to her house, destroying it, looking for him. And the only thing they had to do was just ask her where he was at. And he let them know, basically, hey, I'm in the hospital. I discharged myself for you guys. You can come get me. But they still did it in the most distraught way, like, ever. Like, they really just did it in the wrong way. Yeah, that is. Now they got him down there. Like, his, he still got pneumonia. I know he's in that cold air. He's not covered like he's supposed to. He don't have any medication. They can't, he's in there the whole weekend, so he really don't have nothing to eat, nothing, the right things to drink, like no vitamins. So it's, it's a real, it's really hard for us right now. Yeah. I can imagine, you know, and then, yeah, Monday's going to be interesting to say the least. I will say that. I don't know what your brother's intentions are. You know, I know you are, um, Taylor, you, you helped them start a uh, GoFundMe to get attorney, which I strongly support. He needs to get attorney for talking to anybody from the state's office for sure. Yes. And that's going to be hard. And how, how long we've been dealing with these people is like, he needs an attorney because just going in there and talking to Miss Love and their their team, they don't come to fight fair. Yeah, the fact yeah. that they did all this shows that they're not coming to fight fair. Go ahead, Taylor. Sorry. I was just agreeing. There's no trust there. I mean, how can you blame them for not for not trusting them? Yes, and Miss Miss Love is showing right now that she'll do anything just to get. One, one thing indicted, like she just do anything right now just for one guilty plea and she don't care what she do. So just going on there, he's not in a good mental space right now. He's not in a good health right now. He's not able to be on that stand for those days, being in that cold, being around all those people with his immune system. Like he's not fit to be on that stand. And Nay, how you doing tonight? Um, I have a question. He's not on this Rico, correct? No. Okay. Okay. And he's done, he's done his time for what he supposedly had did, correct? Yes, he did. See, this is. See, it's just like a double jeopardy. You went and do your time. Now you sign the paper, did your time. You come back, been out for a couple of years. Now they want to put that back in your face again. And you're trying to move on with your life. And what's kind of scary is that I feel like they're going to pull like a Woody. You know, they're going to try to get an immunity agreement with your brother. You know, I just feel like that's going to be the plan, right? Because if they really, you know, what's what's so sad about this, this is nothing to do with justice. This is about winning. Mm -hmm. Justice went out the door a long time ago with this case. And I feel like they're just going to try to push the immunity agreement, make your brother testify, throw this whole thing. You're in Rice Street over his head. And that's why he needs like a real advocate to go in there and say, no, nah, we're not playing these games. Because uh -uh. it got to be some type of law. It got to be because they're like, oh, it's the law. Oh, this, and let me bring this up. And I just watched watch it the whole time. Like, come on now. This is if this is what our law system is. Like, this, I don't want to be in America no more. Wow. And now you said that the um the subpoena that was originally placed by Glanville last November has expired because he's no longer in the case. So did Ms. Love serve another subpoena to him or no? Oh. So this night uh she didn't serve subpoena. So this was like what is the warrant coming from? 
he don't have a warrant because he haven't did nothing to get a warrant or he haven't been served to get a warrant. I see if he had a subpoena and he had a court date and he didn't come, then he missed the court date and then you get your warrant. But none of that ever happened for him. Yeah, that's why he needs like advocate because it's it's hard. I challenge the the legalness of this because if you get a material warrant for someone who's under subpoena, so I don't know how, you know, unless Judge Whitaker did some weird stuff, I don't know how he's even locked up right now. Yeah, because you, I don't know, Miss Love probably just threw something at her. Yeah, we be trying to do it. We've been doing this, doing that. You know, she's right now we see that she changed her own paperwork on real lawyers. So she sneaks stuff in and we don't know nothing about that. Exactly. I remember, I think it was uh, either Friday or Thursday. Um, I think the judge was asking about your brother and under her breath, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but she said, if we can find him. So she's making it seem and appear to the judge like he's on the run. Yep. And they can't find him. And it, it's like, does she know that millions of people are watching this and that she is literally trying to evade, she's trying to evade the law. The very law that she's supposed to be implementing, she's doing the total opposite. And yes, and it's like, okay, we look up, we want women, black women in these positions, and then when they get in these positions, like, we the ones that they tear, like, they tear us down more than anybody else. And that's very disheartening. We see, I'm in Chicago, so we have a lot going on out here with our own systems and things like that, and then I see what's going on in Georgia, and I see just globally you're absolutely correct. We'll get in position. And it's like, we almost go 10 times harder than our counterparts. It's like, we're trying to prove a point, but at what, at what state, like why? Yeah. Like I want to, I want to win this case so I can get in another position, but you're not thinking about the families that you're destroying in the process. And that's the thing. That, that's the thing that I was thinking about too. When you just said that and for it's like, what's the long game? Like, what, what is it? Because you can't think that you're going to get anywhere behaving the way that you are. And if you haven't seen yourself, I'm pretty sure somebody else has told you. Because it's, it's, it's a complete disgrace to the, to the justice system. The way that the, the, the behavior in the courtroom is, it's crazy. Like, you, you don't complete your homework. Um, you, you're yelling at, at witnesses. Like, I would, I'm, we were concerned about, we found out that, um, you know, Liddy had a condition and, you know, people were kind of saying what it was. We were already concerned, like, He's not going to be able to sit in that, uh, you know, in that chair and go under the amount of stress that you put. We've seen you put these other witnesses through. Like, he's not going to be able to do that. So how do you intend on winning something or what is, what is really your your long game strategy? Because right now you, you're going no fast. And you know how long it takes. Like, Judge Whitaker, I don't see her be so hard on defense when they finally get to do their cross. She'd be so hard on them. How long is it going to take you? But, Miss. Love with Miss Hilton take days for <laughs> just to ask a question. So when they got the witness on the stand, they take days. And so it's like you're gonna trying to take so long with him on this stand that it's gonna really break him down. And then you're gonna make him look like he's not being cooperative or however it goes, and it's just not it's just not fair. My bigger issue is how um, Whitaker actually looks because for her to be a judge and she's supposed to be going allegedly after a Supreme Court justice seat, right? If you're the judge and th everybody has patterns, right? Miss Love specifically has a pattern. We know that when she's about to allegedly tell a lie, she stutters, she moves really slow, she does all these different things. And as a judge, your judgment is clearly off. And this is the, these, these women that are in these positions right now are making it, uh, how can I say it? Um, it just doesn't look good because if you're in these, you're supposed to be a judge, you're supposed to be an advocate of the law, this, that, and the third, but you can't see that a prosecutor is lying to you clear as day. And she that, sees it, she sees it and they call it out just like, um, who was it that called it out? Shark called it out. And she asked them, like, they're trying to just say we're against Jeffrey, but you guys done had a meeting upstairs in your DA office, and you guys say, hey, we just want the We don't care about how the rest of these guys look. We just want the leader. And the leader was, y'all say it's Jeffrey. So we don't care how we tear these other guys down or what we do to them. We just want this one person. And 
We don't care how it hurts the rest of the people. Don't we don't care how it hurt the kids these guys have, how it hurt the mother, how it hurt the sisters. Y'all just want that one person just to tear down everybody else. Well, you know, what I'm looking at is like Whitaker needs to follow the law. Like, you know, in, in law school, we have this interesting class called the Federal Rules of Evidence, right? Clearly, the Federal Rules of Evidence is clear under Rule 611, right? And I'm just going to quickly say it. Rule 611 says the court, meaning the judge, shall exercise reasonable control over the examining of witnesses. And the judge has to make sure that the witnesses are telling the truth, that it's not wasting time calling these folks, and it's protecting witnesses from harassment and undue embarrassment. She has done none of those things. We just had a witness from Infinity Dealership who pretty much... <laughs> All he, his main job, he's like the guy who, um, who does oil changes. Well, how, mm-hmm. how does that even help with this case? Taxpayers of Atlanta flew somebody up who does oil changes. They could have got somebody from the Infinity dealership in North Carolina. They could have got somebody. They got an oil change brother. Don't we got an Infinity down in Atlanta? That's what I'm saying. Why the guy, he's, he's a service manager. He's the guy that takes your car and pull in for oil changes. He writes the ticket. How is this? You're wasting time. Judge Whitaker, you're clearly wasting time. Exactly. And that, and that's what I was saying. The, it's the waste of time. Just like the, oh, we're going to bring in a social media um, expert. But these are just people that are in their office that work social media. That's not a true evidence expert. You would bring in someone from Instagram to verify you know what you're trying to say because if no one in the court understands it and you see what i'm saying like and she does that she, they they packed all these witnesses these 700 plus witnesses that they had to cut down to 200 because funny and i feel like that entire office they padded this case so that in their mind regardless if there's something went left they had something else to go right especially with the way that like say little rod how uh we were reading about the case earlier um and the motion that uh um that still put in and Little Rod is nowhere in the motion, and the motion that's still put in was what is the PowerPoint that Love has been trying to get in. And in that pot, there's nothing in there with Rod's name on. There's nothing in there with these other gentlemen's name. It's like they just threw the case together and said, okay, hopefully something sticks. Like that. I think, oh, go ahead. I oh, think sorry. They, sorry. I think they weren't ready for trial. And, and that's just what, you know, and it kind of happens. Most district attorneys politicize cases, and they're like, okay, well, we got a year for trial. And then Brian Steele said, oh, I'm filing for a speedy trial. And they weren't ready. That's why you see this trial by ambush, because they're not ready for trial. Go ahead, Taylor. And that's why I always yell when I start my videos, free the jury. Because at this point, like you, I can't even imagine sitting on that stand, putting my life on pause, on hold for umpteen months. Let's just call it umpteen months. And um, you guys are, are doing things in a manner in which you have to continue to give me instructions. Like how many instructions are too many at this point? Like I you just, you guys need to start over. If this is where we are, we, we need to start over, but we know that if they start over that they can't get Jeffrey, they can't get Shannon. So it's, it's kind of like, um, Oh, my God, my son was there. sorry about that. Um, but it's kind of like, when does it end? You know what I mean? Or, or when, when does somebody step in who's above Fonny to say, like, look, you have to call this. You know, and, and one of the things I didn't understand is, for one, you can't ask for a fair trial in the middle trial. Right. That's to me is like the, the weirdest thing. Right. And how can a cure from an unbiased judge, I mean, from, from a biased judge, be un- like how how are they curing something you're supposed to cure it when the judge is biased you cure it and most of the time most cases that have a biased judge who've been re- recused ends in mistrial but somehow Whitaker doesn't want to do her job or maybe she looks at her job different she because- said on three or four occasions sorry to cut you that, that she it's, it's we're right here to mistrial we're right here to mistrial it's like why doesn't she want to just call the mistrial? And she said, but she also said when she came on, she didn't care about what happened before her. And it's like, that almost does a disservice to the entire trial as well, because you're coming in, not even understanding what has been stacked up already. And then when stuff is introduced, she's lost as a judge. That looks terrible. 
And I think Donovan Thomas family deserves justice, right? And to me, it looks how like you all knew who did that. And how how did you deny that family that? But how is this justice if you're trying to solve a case 10 years later? This ain't a cold case. What? <laughs> like, this is, how is this justice? I don't understand. Because that was the premise. That was the premise that Fonnie ran on. Oh, I'm going to get you justice for your family. Just like, what was the one witness that came in a couple months back? And they said, you know, why? He said, I'm here because I was told I was going to get justice. I think it was the gentleman that um had, they had, like, shot him in the head or whatever. And he was told he was going to get justice, but then was told on the stand, oh, did you know that they've already let him out? Right. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. It, it's, 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 it's literally a, a definition of what a circus is. And this, this is, it's gonna, and the only person that, or people I feel can stop it would either be the judge or the jury at this point. When I say the judge or the jury, I mean the jury. <laughs> I know we're alive, but it's just like, there's somebody has to be like, hold up. This is not right. You know, we can keep waiting on somebody to come save us. But if we all have this info, and like I said, I appreciate the letter that you wrote um, to the judge and that you put out there for people to send. But it's like, does that matter with a place like Fulton County? I, you know, I hope no. so. Miss Miss Love said it the other day. She's it, like, I don't care about the evidence. Like, I don't care if they know the evidence or not. Yep, she damn sure did. <laughs> yeah, I don't care if the fuck. evidence is correct or if it's not. I don't care about that. I'm just like, what is you trying to get to then, Miss Love? Like, what is you trying to accomplish if you don't care about them actually having real evidence? I feel like she's trying to harm the black community. And I say that with 10 toes down because of her past history and her, you know, we talk about Fani, we talk about Kamala, we talk about all these black women, but have y'all seen the history of Adrian Love? And what she's done to people, what she's doing to your brother, and they, I hate it, but she's done it before to other men and other um, people that have been under her because she's the head of the difficult witness division. She's in the gang unit. She's she's in the, all these spaces. Right. But what she's doing is not abiding by the very law that she's supposed to be implementing her and all the rest of these people, as we see with Gaither and all these people, they are intertwined in the streets. And we know when you have government and you have the streets intertwined, it's going to be some BS. But what's happening is, to me, I feel like this case is not only political, but it's a vendetta based upon everything that we've seen that the jury has not seen. You know, because we know the jury can't see everything supposedly that we see when they're doing the motions and things like that. But it's quite obvious. Um, and I'm no I'm no lawyer. I'm no anything. But it's if this is her history and we know that she doesn't care about one's health. She doesn't care about anything besides winning. And that was in one of her campaign videos. She cares about convictions, no matter how she gets them. And I think that that is not what the law is about. You know, and to think that love has a 100 percent conviction rate often makes you think, how does she get 100 hmm. percent? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> these plea deals, these I'm going to treat the black man who don't know how to read and look at these plea deals. He's oh, he's going to feel good if he don't have to be in jail this long. Just give him 10 years probation, no matter if he jaywalk, he's back in jail. Yeah, that that's where it gets tricky. It gets real tricky. Off the backs of people, she have gotten 100%, please. Conviction rate. That's crazy. Can he plead the fifth? She don't want him to plead the fifth. She said absolutely not. <laughs> It's not about what she wants. It is his constitutional right. Who gives a damn what that lady wants? Your well, that's constitutional how, right as a citizen is to be able to plead the fifth. And that's why I think they're going to woody him and give him immunity to take that right away. And yeah. that, that there has to be something. It's the law in, all, all over. There has to be something done about that. Like, Woody didn't ask for immunity. They just put it on him at the... To me, that's like... um. You're, you're taking someone's constitutional rights at gunpoint. Because what are you going to say after someone's already given you something that you didn't ask for? Yeah, they know the tricks and trades of this. <laughs> it's just like, like the black people, they don't know. Like, we're not, we don't go to school for long. We just go do our regular job and come back home. You've been doing this for so long. You know how to trick the black community. You know how to trick the young man. And, oh, just do this. It's not going to go against you. You know, matter how what the situation is, they come back to slap him in the face. Yeah. 
he doesn't have to accept the, accept the immunity if they, you know, if they do it in that same capacity. He can still disagree. Like, I don't want to take it. No, that's that's the tricky part. So just I'll break down immunity to you. Right. So when you get arrested. They read you these Miranda rights. So you have the right to remain silent. Anything it says, anything we say against you should be used in a court of law. Right. Can be used against you in a court of law. When you get immunity, that goes away. That Miranda, because what it's saying is that we're not going to use anything you say. So therefore, you have to testify. So, you pl- so you're so, saying so when they say again, just similar to Rudy, he didn't ask for any type of immunity deal. And you remember when they kind of read it over? You remember how he was saying he didn't understand it? So when they give him an immunity deal, you're saying he has to take that, even though he didn't he didn't ask for it or anything like that. So he has to go into that deal. He has to take it or go back to jail. That's exactly what they told Woody. Yeah. Take right. this immunity okay, so deal or go back to jail. He has the option to go back to jail if he chooses. But, but who would, right? That, that's their whole, and they know right. that. Wow. Got it. Yeah. That's where, I think I lost Taylor for a second. Oh, it's in the But that's where it gets tricky at because you have this immunity. And the thing about immunity that's so sneaky about it is that there's a strong possibility that your brother already has immunity when she signed the warrant. They could have hashed that all out right there because the immunity is Fonnie Willis. See, Adrian Love cannot give no one immunity. That's to come from the district attorney. So that's come from Fonnie Willis has to sign that immunity agreement and send it to a judge to sign off under her name. And I see that like she's the one that's making all the big plays at the top. She wanted oh, so bad. Yeah. She making all the plays, and she actually, she done been around all these guys before. When she was the uh, prosecutor, and was actually was on their like on their side. So now it's like, hey, I know them. I know their weaknesses, and I know their strength. So when let she me... was there, when she was the defense attorney. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let me go ahead and play with them one more time. That's that's a question I have as well. The fact that she was Mondo's attorney as a defense attorney and she gained all this info, um, is that not a, a conflict of interest of some sort? Again, I'm not in law, so I don't, this is me asking a, a, because she was his attorney and now she's the DA and she's prosecuting this RICO and Mondo is nowhere on this RICO. Is that not something that we should look at in detail? I think that would definitely be an appellate issue for sure. Um, but the prosecutor decides, um, who they want to prosecute. They have that, you know, that discretion. Wow. That's something else. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to think Taylor's having some connectivity. Taylor, are you back? Are you okay? Okay. Can everyone hear me, though? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, uh, Taylor, you can unmute yourself. Uh, she's having some connectivity issues real quick. But we'll keep talking. We'll figure that out on the back end. <clears throat> so have you talked to your brother? Um, He called our mom for a second. He said he was on the captain phone or something like that. And... Um, put some money on the phone, so he say he's gonna try to reach back out. Is he okay? Or he didn't I guess say he... nothing. It was like a quick five second. Wow. It wasn't even your free call. <laughs> it was a I'm on the captain phone. This my neighbor. So the captain let him see. So that that's that sounds that doesn't sound fishy. That sounds interesting. Has he when he was in jail before? Has he ever called from the captain's phone before? No. Mm. Yeah, they got him. Got him under close watch. It sounds. Like. Yeah, they probably got him under that nasty medical medical facility. That's nasty, cold. Nobody in there know how to really be. I don't even think they got. I think they got staff and medical assistants in there. They don't know what they're doing. No, don't, don't know how to give people the right medications. Yeah, they could take him to Grady de- detention and just have him be there. I don't know. I don't see the problem. 
But didn't you didn't you say nay that or some, you guys said that you guys tried to request that and they denied it? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, this is crazy. Um I just hope that, you know, we're gonna do what we can do to help him get a lawyer. Um if you have not have already got one and get that kind of sealed up because he this Yeah, so we don't even want him to get on Ashley talk to them Monday morning without having an attorney ready. We don't want no. Because this goes by like the Woody formula. He's going to get pulled into a judge chamber on Monday morning before court starts. This goes the way we think it's going to go. I definitely think he needs to act like not to say anything against public defenders, but he needs a paid attorney that's actually going to put forth enough effort to protect him. Unlike, you know, we've seen in the past, because this is not going to be the last time that this happens. And this case in general needs some oversight. And I don't know who that oversight would be <laughs> at this point. Yeah, because she is trying to, oh, I'm going to temporarily excuse you and you're going to come back in case somebody else. You know, like, it's just a lot. I don't see in this mm. I'm sorry about it. I had some connection issues. Apparently, I had to close the app in order to fix this. But I'm back, guys. Good old spaces. But yeah, I think, I don't know if you guys already kind of touched on it or not, but from my understanding, it's kind of difficult to get an attorney that even wants to be bothered with this case because you have, um, you have an attorney who, or an ADA who wants to put the attorneys on the stand. It, it's a substantial amount of time that is taken away from other cases or it's requiring a substantial amount of time to be taken away from other cases. And so, um, you know, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier today uh, over on TikTok, but, um, just even trying to obtain private attorneys to come in and assist you, it, it's a task in itself. And, and it is that it's, it's heartbreaking. And, you know, we just listened to Mook Tool talk about how, what well, we just found out during Mook Tool's testimony that it was a point in time where they didn't have any public defenders to even issue to anybody because there were so many conflicts of interest from my understanding, you know? And so it, it just, it just kind of puts it in a weird place. I just want to know how or see how Whittier is going to respond. Yes. The email to actually retain a lawyer just for this case be hard because they be wanting so much money. Oh, we're on the Gunther Rice right? Rico case. We want ten thousand. We want fifteen. We want twenty just to for like the conversation or the sake. And this, then I actually, I don't really be thinking they actually look at the paperwork or see what's going on to actually help these guys for real. You know, and some of that is because they don't even know how long you know <laughs> he's gonna be on the stand. Yeah. <laughs> That's, you just don't know. You know, think about this, right? Kenneth Copeland was under subpoena in that case for 75 days. I, I counted maybe 76. Like, that's a long time for a witness. Granted, they had breaks, but still, like, that's a long time. We saw how three hours turned into four days plus your time. Yeah, and we, and we see how she's already trying to impeach before anybody even gets on the stand next. She's already talking impeachment and all this and wanting to bring Ashley Merchant up because of a plea deal. And th these plea deals, I, I just don't understand. Um, it's like they pack them in there. And like Muntum said, I didn't write that. You wrote that. And I just wanted to get out of jail. So I signed it. I didn't think 10 years later this was going to happen or have, you know, however long. And uh, like somebody else said, I don't know exactly who said it, but they were saying if everybody takes i think it was 13th it was the documentary called 13th but it's if everybody says hey i want a trial it's essentially the system will break because they don't have the capacity for everybody to take trials hence these plea deals these unethical plea deals at that you know and think about this for a second right as an attorney um nay you're going to tell me all right come represent your brother right that may mm -hmm. take a couple of weeks then there's a strong possibility we've seen this week that if your brother don't do what he needs to do as I'm his lawyer, the district attorney's going to call me to come testify after that. Yes. And then this lawyer just now getting to know him. So it'd be a scary thing. Are you really going to fight for him or are you just going to be like, it is what it is. That's where life gets a little tricky because you just don't know who you're, you know, who you have. And 
I just I'm 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 really curious to see how how Whittier responds because she's got to know what's happening. Like, there's no way that nobody called her phone. Like, hey, did you know X Y Z is going on? So I'm hoping that she shows up and and has more grace about um, the situation and behaves more appropriately than than Glenville did. And even though I don't. Um, I didn't watch all of that because it was just a lot to watch during that time. Um, even though I didn't watch all of that, just kind of listening and reflecting back on uh, some of the, the the quick highlights. Um, I just hope that she 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 she. she <laughs> I hope that she's the petty page that she needs to be. <laughs> she done watched the she done watched that hot mess of a trial. I know they all in that courtroom. Speaking on what's going on in that trial and what they seen and everything, just like she said from the beginning. Oh, I see you guys got your headphones in your ear and y'all been doing this and that. Like you don't see everything that going on in that trial, and you know exactly how the prosecution team been working. Whitaker knows exactly what's going on with your brother because who signed the warrant? Mm-hmm. No one else could sign the warrant mm-hmm. but her. <laughs> no one else gonna sign the immunity agreement with Fannie Willis but her. And and we've been hearing for a while that he was the next witness. He was the next witness for at least the last two or three weeks, you know, and she kept saying she couldn't find him. And obviously we know that she did know where he was at. And it's like the way she goes about getting these testimonies is just uh, inhumane at, at this point. And I don't that it's like a lot of people also in Fulton County looks like they they're afraid of her. Yeah, like a testimony, a testimony is not evidence. No matter how much you can say, a person can say anything, that's not evidence. That's not solid evidence to show, hey, a person said this and or the other. But where's your actual evidence, Miss Love? Miss Fanny, where's your evidence? You're going to get everybody locked up from hearsay. I'm going to tell you all this, and I've been saying this for a long time, right? The first thing all these guys are charged with is called RICO, right? The R stands for racketeering. Where's the money? Right. If there's racketeering, <laughs> where the money at? Because all I heard is people just selling, selling dime bags. 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 <laughs> yeah, like that's <laughs> trying to pay rent. Like, where's the money at? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So it's like, what, what, what did we? Everybody see today the other uh, Georgia case where all of the the drugs and all that was fine. I was like, okay, now that's the case. That's the that, okay. that case. Makes yeah, sense. Pee Wee Hill. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, that case. Twenty-two makes million sense. dollars worth of drugs. Enough. Okay, I see the money. Where is this money? Yeah, those were bags and extra money. And you can see how this money goes towards this bag. That's a RICO case. But selling at a gas station, that was the guy spending guy time in these broke neighborhoods looking at the gas. And, oh, these little boys at the gas station selling nicks and dimes or they hang with somebody that's up. That's not RICO. They sell drugs in Buckhead, Sandy Springs, Alpharetta. Y'all not out there making no drug buzz. And talk about a gang and nobody know it. nobody nobody know nobody mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah exactly i don't I, i'm still and this is until this case is over i'm stuck on Lil rod because again he wasn't in the original documentation i understand that you know he has life so i feel like that's love's last resort it's like well if nothing else works hey he wanted them so take them all because of what he did and he's he was actually a ch- child they just like, it's hard to explain. Like, he shouldn't have been on that Rico anyway. He shouldn't really be in jail that long as well either. If you do the math, look at, and I looked at Lil Rod's docket. And when this stuff was going on, he was 12. Wow. Now, wow. y'all tell me, what was he doing? Well, all of them look young. Did you see the, everybody looked under the age of 18 almost. But Lil Rod. Go ahead. Go ahead, Taylor. No, I was just going to say, you know, we don't, for me, I don't really know the ins and outs of the friendships and things like that. So from the outside looking in, it looks like it, it just looks like they may have known him, but nobody really knew him. And the protection that they're talking about, like that love is putting up like, oh, you know, he had this incident with his commissary and they all jumped up for him. It's like, well, yeah, he kind of from around the way. We don't want y'all to mishandle him. He's a kid. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? At the end of the day. And so it, it just looked really and weird to me. That. And I was, like, that's the thing yeah. I hate about them. They know that. You're in jail. Hey, they put all y'all folks together. They saying y'all people together. Y'all from the same neighborhood. Even though half of them never seen each other before or no, they was like, when they first got on Rico, who was that? How the hell he get on this case? Like, where he come from? So it's like, just because they come from the same neighborhood and somebody might say, 
one name, that don't mean the other person know that person. So when she asked somebody, was like, how do you know this person? She said, I heard from him run away. I never been in a room. He never been in the car with me. So it's a difference. So actually, y'all all grew up actually side by side together. Mama stayed next door. And y'all could put somebody like that in a Rico. But this case is just, it's, um, mm-mm. Yeah, I think it's it's just personal for me. It's personal for the district attorney's office, you know. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing: like people need to understand why they brought Little Rod in here. It's nothing but optics. There's nothing to do. If you look at the RICO statute, it requires that to be charged with the RICO, they have to prove one overt act, right? And they have to prove that that overt act was done to furtherance the the gang. They put Little Rod in there for optics. The optics is that they knew that they didn't really have to prove the murder because the murder was already convicted. All they got to do is try their best to prove that it's it that he did it with the support of some YSL members. That's how low they went to do that. So she's and actually mad she now. She's mad now because they're like the jury is seeing and they actually like, hey, she don't want them to say, hey, I they had nothing to do with whatever I did. I went out the club one night and I was mad and they jumped on me and I committed a crime. Oh, that's just saying they're doing this individually. They did it on their own. So she's mad. They're telling you, that, hey, I did this on my own. Why are you mad at? Why are you mad at this situation? You want to say, hey, they made me do it. I got jumped at the club and they made me go do this. Like, I don't understand. And that's what I'm struggling with too. Like y'all saying that that thug is the ringleader. Like you have yet to prove me that he's told anybody to do anything. Like linking your rich friend, just be your rich friend. Like come on now. Like if I'm in trouble and I got a rich friend, I'm sorry. I might call my rich friend and be like, hey. Something is going on with me right now. I need you. Or my rich friend might look at me and be like, the things that you're doing are bad. Come with me. Let me show you something. Like, what can my rich friend just be my rich friend? But you don't heard them say, everybody don't say the same thing. Thug ain't paying for nobody lawyer. He's not helping them do anything like that. So if a person actually told you to do something like that, they'll be making sure your lawyer fees, they'll be making sure a lot of, a lot is done for you to tell you to commit a crime factual for sure and that's where you know like i said th- this is all personal to if i feel like to love she just wants to win this is a she's maybe this is her career move i don't know but is this love or is this funny it's funny funny, it's for funny. yeah but you know we gotta understand too like prosecutors take cases like like this to interview on the national stage so it's definitely both of them in in a way, but you know, to each his own. I don't think Love really care about Fani right now because if you look at, listen to her redirects, it's all it's all about the person personal pieces. I feel like both of them, her and Hilton. Anytime they do they redirect, it's not really about cleaning up the, the cleaning up what just happened. It's more about let me prove that what you're saying that I did isn't right. So it, I don't really think it's about Fani. I think it's more about self. And I feel bad for Hilton. Everybody tell me not to or maybe that I shouldn't, but I do feel like Sis probably just trying she trying to get out. After I seen her break down after Woody or Woody, I'm like, Sis just she wanna go home. She wanna be done. Yeah, baby girl, just leave. Who um who the Gary Lil, the lady that was with him, she left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like they it was too much for them. And they were just they had some good opening arguments, but it was too much of, hey, the defense gonna come back with whatever they got to do to fight for their, um, defendants. Like, they were like, okay, this is too much. A lot of this ain't right. Like, we're gonna have to have hard evidence to deal with all these good lawyers. But let me tell you why she ain't left. Remember, she's the president of the Black Prosecutors Association of Georgia. That would look terrible on her to do. I mean, actually, okay. So let me rephrase that because that just sounded real crazy. That was the lady. And in, in reality, she should walk away and hold some ethics to herself, right? But in her mind, or I believe, you know, that's their favorite thing to say, I believe, because they don't know nothing. So I believe that she is trying to save face for her positions that she carry. No, for sure. And, and, and I'm going to say this, right? So. I actually know Hilton. Um, I'm in law school, so I sit on the National Association of Black Law Students. And that's a their chapter of the National Association of Black Prosecutors. We have a chapter inside that chapter. 
So when I spoke with Hilton in Maine, I don't know y'all remember, she was at a conference up in Maine at the national meeting of national black prosecutors. I asked her, she said, and I, and I said, Hilton, like, like, what's the optics at the table? And her response to me was profounding and it was quick. She said, work is work. And I take that as, listen, Mm -hmm. I'm just here to do my job. I don't care about the optics at the table. So that means she don't really, to me, don't really like Adrian Love. If I read between the lines. Oh, no. Yep. You see and the then Miss Love, I hated that Miss Love just lied yesterday. And somebody, oh, they can hear everything we saying on the mic. We can't hear you when we watch the law in crime. Your expressions, your body language, your the way you move your mouth, we can see everything you're saying. The and how you the teeth. <laughs> <laughs> you wear your heart on your shoulder. So we see it. So we can't hear you, Miss Love. Can she not be held in contempt for those faces and things that she gestures that she makes in front of the jury? Like, I've been wondering that for a while because she is so animated that it could influence the jury. Can it not? Or am I incorrect? Somebody tell me. No, um, but somebody could bring it to the judge's uh, uh, attention. That's commentary. I think Adams did bring it up to the actual judge, the commentary that she Yeah, commentary. It's, it's, yeah. it's OC. Yeah. But what here is all... She's all bark no bite. Like she says something and then she turns around and does it right again and she never corrects her nothing. I'm like, look, at this point, you have to start finding her like Trump because she don't care. <laughs> like if this yep. woman show up on Monday without this over at case law, just she can't use the evidence. She can't do it. <laughs> well, I'm, gonna you, like- I'm gonna get you to the end of I'm gonna get you to lunchtime. Like, no, you don't already get them uh they don't already had two years to get this stuff together. But the judge is like an ex prosecutor, so I know like you know it's normal to see her help the the prosecution, but what is not normal is for her to be complete in sentences for the prosecution yes. and all this extra stuff yeah that that's what upsets me. It's like, well, you meant to say, oh, you mean, and she literally cuts her off, and I'm always like, I think I said in the space the other day, I was like, I don't understand why she does that, and uh, yeah, she used to be I honestly feel that they mix their energy. Okay, so she used to be a prosecutor. Love used to be a judge. Glanville used to be a part. You know, so those roles, I understand how the law works and everybody, you know, they do their different things. But it's like that almost becomes confusing because sometimes when you're in a different position, you may act like or think you're still in that other position. And that becomes a little, eh. I have a question. Um, Do y'all think that Whitaker, when she does that, she does it strategically by saying, oh, is this what you meant to say? Or is this like the way she kind of phrases her words when she helps them like with their arguments? Is that what you meant? And then kind of gives it to them where she's kind of like trying to teeter that line with like, well, I'm not really helping them. I'm just trying to get clarification. If you kind of pay attention to how she words it. I'm going to give you an example. About a week ago, there was on cross. Love said objection. And literally the judge said what the objection should have been. Like, I remember not, that. You're not supposed I to do that. that. What? Objection. That's speculation. That, Love wasn't about to call it speculation. She was going to call it relevant. And it's that's like, what I mean about right. them mixing up their their job titles. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Everybody that think- defense is scared to say, Miss Whitaker, like you're keep helping her? Yeah. You do as a lawyer have to tread lightly, and when you when you um. You know, this ain't your only case. But at the same time, what's right is right, wrong is wrong. But then Whitaker said a week ago, I'm not here to help nobody. I'm like, bullshit? What do you like you say you're doing that? And I do think that sometimes she just gets frustrated with Adrian Love because she just talks and she just keeps talking until she figures out what her argument is and then she jumps in to help her because she wanted to shut up. <laughs> yep, because I feel like she helped Sharp the most. Like when Sharp talking and Miss Love try to say something, Whitaker could have been like, "No, he meant this," and it's like, "Look at her." But when still up there, she be like, mm-hmm, "Like that." Yeah, like pick a side, Whitaker. <laughs> Matter of fact, don't pick a side. Pick the law. Yeah, just end it. <laughs> end it. I'm just so tired of her saying, "Well, this is headed to mistrial." Well, mistrial it then, and we can go on with our life. Like. <laughs> Why are you teasing us saying it's headed someplace that you don't want to take it? Or who's telling you not to make it a mistrial? You know, I don't know. My favorite is you. I mean, you just told them. Yeah, it that's what me. I think. Somebody telling her not to call it because honestly, she could have granted even Harvey mistrial that he put. She cannot really catch up how she think 
but somebody telling her no. So, well, I can tell you this. She- the reason why she didn't grant those mistrials is because she was in a jam. And I'm going to tell you the jam that she was in. Brian still put her in a jam. I don't think she could have sided with the defense and saying mistrial without retrying it. She didn't want to do that. I don't think she had enough evidence to do that. And she could have granted mistrial and allowed them to retry it. But the problem is if she did that, because Jeffrey Williams filed a speedy trial request, that means that if she granted, they will have about one week to sit a new jury, and they couldn't do that. Yeah. So essentially, they came to it with nothing in the first place. Hundred percent. All right, guys, we're going to have some, I know a lot of people are asking for some quick questions, but if you do come up for a question, you kind of got to like ask your question. I got to put you back down because there's too many people requesting to come up. So I'm going to start with a lawyer, actually, from Florida. Um, Bellin, how are you? Bellin? How are you? Good. I think you're breaking up, though. I think she's breaking up. Um, she would probably have to come off the Bluetooth because it sounds like yeah. she's in the car on Bluetooth. Yeah, for sure. SCIG... Okay, SCIG. Oh, I'm just listening tonight, but I do want to say um, that the Zachary stuff is really like, it's just so unacceptable. I'm eager to see Monday how it's going to go, but I think that he shouldn't do anything until he has a lawyer there. I wouldn't speak to love. Don't say anything to me until I have a lawyer right here beside me. Period. For sure. Yeah. Well, we can make that come true. Um, we're going to post the uh, the GoFundMe. That'll definitely make it come through. Once you speak, I do have to take it down because spaces start acting weird when there's more than five people and two co-hosts. But um, Alexis. Alexis. Hey, y'all. Hey. I didn't really have any questions. Um oh. But I do feel, you know, bad um, for Lil D. And um, I'm really sorry to hear about what happened. Yeah, we are. Definitely. Thank you. Valerie. Hey, guys. So I just want to say I was like on Instagram as we're having this you know, discussion and Woody, he just like posted a picture of Thug, right? And with this long prayer about all the defendants and Thug and like, I just, I just was wanted to make that a point because I feel like, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit confused about his position, you know, and how Thug might feel about him. But I feel like he just posted his picture and just, you know, said this really long, you know, prayer about freeing him and the defendants. So I just wanted to like make you guys aware. I'm sure you follow him because most people do, but that's what I wanted to say. Yeah. I don't personally follow Woody, but I'll definitely look into that though. No shade for Woody, but thanks Val. Just kind of based on some conversations that we've had though, um, in different spaces with infamous Sylvia, um, Nine times out of ten, they probably just don't speak, but they don't have like bad blood between them. Yeah, no, I, you know, listen, I think there, there there is a side to Woody's story that is profounding to me about how he was just played by the police. Like I feel like he had like a handler. That's what it feels like. Oh, and they just mess with him. Yeah, poor Gaither, right? Somebody just mess with him, and then that's a whole story I learned on your live yesterday taylor about the gaither thing so that's 
I don't know. I wonder, is she back on the witness list? Because I would definitely cross her on that for sure. You got to check on Monday now. <laughs> I got to call. I'm 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 a text Max sorry. And ask him like, is she on the witness list, buddy? That that's like the hottest tea in this entire thing right now, as far as whoa, you know, because it, it, if if it was already known, if it wasn't known, now we know. So what happens now that we know? Like my mouth dropped when it when it when I like understood what was what was being said. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, no. I feel like this. So, in in essence, she essentially infiltrated the 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 the, the situation by getting that close. Like people think things are just on TV or just in movies, but it's a reality is a lot more interesting than sometimes what you may see on TV and the things that people do. Because for her to do that and get close and get all this information, and we are now the the viewers are like, is that why we didn't have reports all this time? Because she was you heard oh. like basically we heard Woody every time she answered Woody she said you boy I know you he was like I can't um play with gates like that because she know me like mm-hmm. he kept saying it but we never knew how to like people really never knew how to catch it. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I would do if I was a lawyer in in this case I wouldn't even bring that up until the state rests their case then I'm a subpoena Gator to come back up as the witness let let the state put their whole case out. Now I'm going to come back as a defense and subpoena her to be one of my witnesses. Well, we know well, we saw how Brian still was in the stash and we might have just killed this whole plan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Brian. Love you, boy. Um, Somebody did want to come up. I'm sorry. We got sidetracked here for a second. Uh, Lizzie yeah, hi. Um, I just have a question. So if Little D is shows up to court on Monday, when will he have time to speak to his attorney to prepare for court if he's going to be on the witness stand? That's the whole thing. So the weekend, we're not going to be able to find an attorney. He's right. going to actually have to call back. We're going to have to talk to him. It's not... We don't even know. They done already try to go in there. You know, they'll try to go in there giving him some paperwork or just go in there and try to talk to him before he can even speak on getting an attorney. So we don't know what he's going, what he done been through already since he's been in jail. So does he have an at- attorney right now? Or no. You guys, no, we're you're trying to, on that? Yes, we're trying to get him one to actually walk in. We're trying to retain one to actually be able to walk in the court with him. But right. Monday, it's going to be kind of hard because it's going to be short time. And so we have to find one. Yeah. One day morning, that's going to be hard. So. Well, no, you should, if you can, just because I've dealt with this a little bit, if you can find someone now just so you can give the attorney background information because they will have no information just mm-hmm. to get that ball rolling because nothing has been fair in this trial. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What I'm also a- I'm sorry, go ahead. I said just get a lawyer to send an email of love to cease the operation of talking to my client. Okay. Yep. Until Monday. Because best believe Sunday night, they're going to come, you know, they're going to be at right. Yes. Place. Definitely going to go in there and try to give him a paper, trying to, do you want to talk? Like, have y'all fed him? Have y'all gave him some medication? Have y'all checked his anything? Have you sent him the grade so you can make sure he, he's able to talk I mean, to you guys? This is so, so so bad i can't i don't even have words just this whole situation i have a boyfriend that's in prison right now and someone that is that sick they don't give a fuck like you're you're on your own this is so wrong it's think about what they did to woody you know oh it's so i like this whole case i'm just completely in shock every single day just how how miss love treats i'm a white girl (laughs) How she treats like her people from her own community. It is just her disrespect and using people, ruining people's lives. This is so fucked up. I can't believe it. Yeah. Yes, because you got people on this case that never had, that never had but anything, uh, never got locked up before. So now their first case is a Rico just because I put something on my Instagram. I oh, it's- made a song. Now, like, like with Ghana and like Swan Light Shorty, you gave them a Rico, but you don't want them to 
perform. You don't want them to say certain things in their song because everything that's in their song, they're going to be like, oh, it's part of a Rico. It's part of a gang activity. Like, you're taking from their kids. Like, Smiley like, got four kids. Like, you're taking away from his children now. Like, how he's going to be able to be his kids when this was his job? This was his crown. This all he knew. This is what he worked hard for. I know. And let alone, and to, like, people have no idea, le- like, legally to get representation, how expensive that is. And the prosecutors know that the more time is on their side because most people can't afford to defend themselves this long, too. Yeah. Um, and that's I, not fair. For sure. Anyway. Is it, is it, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'll, I'll sound off, but prayers and positive vibes to you all. If I was in Atlanta, my ass would be outside that courtroom every day screaming at Miss Love. She has it coming. Yeah, appreciate that. Okay, and then he's so, not even on the medical floor. Like they just want to move him for where he at. So he's taking. I don't know. That air is sank in there. <laughs> if you in there, it's sank so bad in there. People coughing. People nasty. Like with different issues. Like it's hard to even think it's, about. It. It's like cruel and unusual punishment. Like this should not. This is it. <laughs> I guess this is America. Never mind. I was about to say this can't be America, but <laughs> clearly we're in America. <laughs> and I looked at different countries, like they actually reform their inmates. Like we just slave them. Other countries reform them. They're not having them in inhumane cages with making them be cold half of the time. I don't heard guys say the water's not working. Can you call them and tell them the water's not working? We can't take a shower. We don't got nothing to drink. We, how we gonna make our noodles? Like, how do y'all expect these folks to eat and they gotta make their noodles in the shower with hot water? But, you know, this is why I wrote that letter to Whitaker. Like, she's really pissed me the fuck off because this is not how we are taught to practice law. First of all, if you're gonna bring in lyrics, that's one thing. But we're gonna look at the rules of evidence, the federal rule of, of evidence that Georgia adopted, the rule of completeness. You cannot bring in a part of a lyrics. The federal rule says that. You have to bring in the whole song. You cannot bring in parts of something. Two, in the rule of completeness, you got to know who wrote the song. You just can't bring in a song or some form of of work. You don't know who wrote it. AI could have wrote it. A ghost artist could have wrote it. You're just bringing in stuff. And that's why Whitaker's really pissed me off because you're not even following the rules. I, forget about the facts. Follow the rules for a second, and then we'll get to the facts. Yeah, do you know how many ghost writers actually write songs and they never get they credit for it. They never get paid for it because a person just like, oh, he a hot artist. He took the song for them. They ain't like, he didn't even write this song and it's just like half of the time. They be scared to say they got a ghostwriter because you look at the people, they're going to say, oh, he don't write his lyrics. Like, he, you know, it's just like, how can you win for losing? Listen, last night I was on Spaces and I went on ChatGBT and I asked him to write me a gangster song as if I was a thug. And it's lyrics talking about killing my mama, killing bull in the block, my grandma crying. It's like, if Chat Ch- GBT can write something like that, and, like, come on, like, what, the rule of completeness here. That was just a Chat GBT. If you was on my live, you will really hear me talk about that yesterday. Literally, it was like, your mom got shot down the block. It's going to be a rap. It was a whole bunch of stuff. And then you're bringing Rico charges? Come on. Black, I got a question when you talk about the rules of completeness in regards to I think this was Hilton when she was introducing evidence. And um, I think it was about uh, Christian Eppinger and I think like Lil D when they was bringing up those Instagram uh, videos and pictures and stuff like that. And how I think the defense was objecting because they were trying to introduce and show, I guess, affiliation because he started a clothing line and he had slat on there but like how how are they able to kind of get that in um just because they don't because i think they were saying it was saying o s s f whatever it was or anything like that and that was enough for the judge to say oh it's coming in but literally it still wasn't showing any distinction between like why sell affiliate clothing that you guys have already shown and things like that and then also um i think I think we already talked about the the thing they're misportraying the whole live story, you know, private calls and stuff like that. But yes. what is that? What, how, what is, can you expound a little bit more on that? Well, here's the thing, right? There's a lot of things and this is, and I'm not trying to be like a joke. I literally went on Amazon today 
and I put Whitaker's Chambers address to send her a book of the Federal Rules of Evidence. In case she forgot, maybe it's not near. It's been a while. <laughs> you might need to get it, baby. Because there's a couple things they're not even allowed to do, like a repost. Even in the, the rules of completeness, it has to be authenticated as its original form. If you repost something, that's not the original form. Exactly. Right. And when it comes to call the line, like, I don't mean it's a lot of artists. You got people that get them free clothes. And once you wear that clothing line, these people are like, oh, he got the clothes on, take a picture of him. And they get paid off because they want somebody with a big name to wear their clothes just to generate more money. Okay, if Future wear it, if T.I. wear it, Thug wear it, ooh, they're going to generate me. And they'll keep giving you clothes to wear. And they'll put a snake on there or put slat on there. Put slat on anything, guess what? Everybody going to want to buy it because whoever had it on. And it don't even have to look good. Just, ooh, as long as he wear it, I want to wear it too. I don't care what nobody say. You're my favorite black student. If you sent that lady a book of ethics, like you going down in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> I just wanted to, because maybe she don't have it. I, because either my school is teaching me wrong, or Mm-mm, y'all don't know it. that training. Like she tried to tell love, uh, all of them need training. <laughs> Literally, they all need training. She probably does need to read that book because, like I said earlier, they're not following, I, like you said, the rules of the law by any means necessary. So, did you think that was a Brady violation? I mean, I know Steel was arguing due diligence and that, yeah, he essentially got it, but, like, do you, tell me what you think. Well, you know, Brady is is very, you know, a lot of people don't understand Brady. Brady is a little complicated in the way people consume it, right? Because there's, you know, there's Brady violations and then there's, you know, you know, there's other ways of Brady. I don't think there has been a clear Brady violation because Georgia has this very loser discovery laws. That if, if even in any trial, when, when a lawyer or prosecutor forgets to give them some discovery, the laws in Georgia say, well, you, the judges has to give you a day to look at it. It's not even like a curable thing. So like, you know, people often compare Brady to Alec Bowman case. That's really different. The Alec Bowman case was clear Brady violation because they took evidence and they hid it underneath a different name. They hid it underneath a different case. They were purposely hiding stuff. That's different with, in what they're doing here. Even though they did it here, I think early in this, this trial, there was some paperwork that was given to defense and it, and it literally had said, don't file or don't share. But even if there is Brady, I don't think the cure of Brady would be to give somebody an introduction to law school course. And these are professional deputy prosecutors i have a question so with um the fact that uh, let's just take whitaker just this by itself she tells her oh we need this by august 19th oh we need this by friday oh, and and do don't prosecutors have some sort of morality to uphold you know when it comes to timing when it comes to providing information and and then for Whitaker to continue to blame the defense and then when she does seem to reprimand love it's not her just reprimanding love she'll do the Glanville and say well both sides need to no simply reprimand love because love is holding this case of love is why this mess is the way it is right now let's get this show on the road you came in and said we're not going to do this and this is going to be swift and my courtroom is going to run like and she's not doing that yeah, that was all political to me. She started off so strict and this is going to be this way. Look at the last couple of days. Her attitude has changed. Mm. Court has only been 30 minutes. Friday, how long was court on Friday? Like an hour? I think but it was about want, two hours. Two but, hours. But, but you, but you're saying you're going to run this case efficiently? Get out of here. She, I have a- she's just been so. I'm so disappointed in Judge Whitaker. I thought she was <laughs> a breath, a breath of fresh, fresh air. She just a white woman with a robe that acts like Glanville. Like I, you know, it's, it's no different between that judge and this judge. I can't see one parallel. When it comes to, um, the lawyer, I have, I was trying to say something maybe 10 minutes ago. Um, from my understanding of what I've seen actually happen in the past, not necessarily in Rico, this is a bigger case, but 
Um, I think at any point in time, you can contact a lawyer at any point in time. And even if you don't have all the money up front, some lawyers will take what's called, I don't know what the wording or, but they'll take a dollar simply for you to retain them. And that way they can do what Black said about as far as- Pro bono? Um, I'm sorry, say it one more time. Like a pro bono lawyer? Yeah, not, not even pro bono. Just the, uh, cause I've seen it happen in the past where they'll say, just give me a dollar. Okay, now you've retained me as a lawyer. What do you need me to do? And then whatever else is taken when it comes to financial, you take care of that on the back end. Because right now he need this is one of those emergency situations where hopefully there's a lawyer listening. There's a lawyer out there in Georgia that can come and help this young man because we are watching. We always talk about what we would do if I was alive and if this, then the third and we walk the bam. But then it comes down to it and we're silent. Now's the time where we can all come together to save at least one black man at one at a time. You know what I'm saying? But to be able to come in and say, cool, I'll take the case. Give me a dollar. Boom. You paid me. It's not, it's not pro bono. You, you paid me even if it was a dollar at this point in time. Just so somebody can come and take this case on Monday morning or even Sunday tomorrow. He's not in there alone. This case makes me so sad because the way that this ha- is, it's, when does it end? Yeah. When does it end? But this is, you know, this is this is deeper than what people think it is, too. You know, oh, you know, there, there's so many criticism from different sides. But people don't understand this is a fundamental right we all have. I don't care if your brother did it or didn't do it. He has rights. That's exactly. what I care about. He has rights. My grandfather used to say a dog and a cat deserves respect. Right, they have and that's how it blows me. That it blows me that as as other human beings, we can look at somebody else and say, "You deserve to be treated like this." Like, what? How did we get here? How did we get here? I thought we came. I thought we made a a lot of progress from getting away from this, and this is where we are. We treat our we treat our we treat each other like this, and we treat our our kin like this, and it's just like. Yeah. And people say, "Oh, oh man, there's a GoFundMe to." To help a criminal. No, it's to go find me help a human. It's nothing to do with anything at all but to help a human. I don't care. He's done his time. His sister said that. He's he he's done his time. And that's why, you know, when I was talking to dad last night, like I had to tell him like I'm video flowers right now because even in the black community, like, we don't see a lot of dads that that sit here still fighting for they for their children. You know what I mean? Like I don't know how old D is, but I'm pretty sure he's in, he's a, he's over the, he's over the age. You know, he's old enough where maybe his dad or his, you know, their parents maybe don't have to make a lot of his decisions or every day or daily decisions, but you know what I mean? Like as a, as a father, like you standing 10 toes down on yours. And, and I'm, and I'm happy to see that. But think about this. If they do it to young thug, they'll do it to your son. If they do it to young thug, they're telling you they'll do it to anybody. Finally, will said, fame means nothing. Okay, well, that means, guess what? If I do it to the king, I'll do it to the servant. But meanwhile, you out here ducking subpoenas laid up with, with your paid booze. So it's just like, I can't take her seriously. Like, it's just about her just infuriates me. One quick question, but is Quindaria Zachary the same one where we heard about in the trial where, where, um, and it's, um, nay, your dad? Cause I remember hearing about where earlier in the trial, how Miss Love like purposefully like lied to one of the witnesses family when they apparently like moved to Augusta and was living in Augusta and lied to say, Oh, I need you to report to my office for trial or something like that. And when they came in, they figured out the trial hasn't even started yet. She just lied to get them to come up there and he was like, you know what? I'm taking my son and I'm going home. Like what, what what witness was that? Yes, that was Zachary. That was doing jury duty. So wow. they tried to make him come up there then. And once mm-hmm. once he seen that it wasn't try having started, he went off. So they've been lying to you your your family and deceiving them about really what's going on. Yeah. I think then they were trying they I think they subpoenaed him then or was trying to serve him the subpoena. And when they came up there and he saying, this ain't trial, this jury duty. Like, this ain't, that was saying, like, doing jury duty, you was trying to subpoena, oh, you're going to come this day. Or, you know, they keep telling people, oh, you're going to come this day, and you talk to somebody for 10 days. 
Right. It's still labeling him as like not being cooperative with them and stuff like that, just to get, I guess, a little favor from the judge to be able to do, I guess, move a certain way by trying to label him. Oh, he's not cooperating with us and stuff like that. Whole time y'all have been adhering to it and they're just, they're just going away of uh, uh, the wrong way about it. Yeah, that is crazy. And then, you know, just to pretend like, you know, they had me thinking your brother was missing and, you know, he could be in Australia somewhere. Like if somebody missing, what's the first, my mom told me, uh, if somebody missing, you better call the hospital first. Like why didn't he call the hospital first? If he missing. Every time they don't call him, he was in the hospital. Like they can, y'all can pull that up easily. We can show you his medical records, how many times he don't went to the hospital. He go outside for three days, he back in the hospital. He eat the wrong food, he back in the hospital. He got a messed up immune system. Like, he get blood transfusion. He catch pneumonia all the time. He been doing this for all his life. This is cruel and unusual punishment. For him to have all those medical, medical conditions, pick him up out front of a hospital and take him to the most dirtiest trifling place in the world to sit until Monday. You know, love go lower, and that's the sad part about it. This bitch will do anything for a win, like anything. And it's it's so sad, all the way down to talking about people's dead parents and sisters and brothers and stuff like that. She goes low, and nothing good comes out of this. I hope she never gets funny position ever. She sucks. I, I tell love right now, love, you try to run for district attorney, I'm moving. To Fulton County, and I'm gonna run against you. At that point, I don't even want no more ladies in power because it show me black women <laughs> take their power to another level. See I really what I'm saying? saying? I rather deal with a Karen. I don't want to make a bad for everybody. Black women in power. You know, and, and that's where it gets tricky. It's like, if Love is, her job title is the Deputy Director of Difficult Witnesses, but she couldn't even cross-examine Woody. He's the most difficult witness there is. Because she did what she had to to get them in there. And then that's why, even, uh, what was it, uh, Quindary, well, no, I'm sorry, Montu. And he was like, stop talking to me like I'm a child because they're familiar with her. Whatever she does to get them to even sign the paperwork or whatever, whatever her tactics are as the head of the Difficult Witness Division, it, it's unethical and it's like that's why don't nobody want to play with her because they know she's not playing by the book that's not even a real title like what does that even mean <laughs> i don't even know like that's one thing i don't like about black folks it's like soon we get like a good job like district attorney we start making up job titles director of the special copying division like what are you a prosecutor or are you not that all this other stuff is moot whole time you just load the machine yes like, come on, you're a prosecutor. Every every if you're a prosecutor, you're gonna have difficult witnesses. You what, what does that mean? Sometimes I don't like America. Sometimes sorry. Not even just the difficult witnesses. She's also in the the what is it's charge of the gang unit. She's the she has like five or six titles, and it's like, can you do one? You can't even do homework for this case. I can't imagine her having any other cases right now. Could, could just imagine. Or is this or this not the only case she has right now? Or does she have more at this current time? I don't know. She can't have no more cases. No. I don't know. Well, she, she came in. She came in sick like Monday. She got over that so quick. Oh, well, if she I ever got sick, see, girl, that was her. I way need sick. <laughs> yeah, I know, girl. I'm, I'm just, I'm just jeffing. For sure. <laughs> She she did that, but then five minutes later, after she said, "Excuse me, Judge, Your Honor, for my voice," she started yelling. Ten minutes later. <laughs> what is her, don't worry about it. I'm gonna help you anyway. You know, shut up. I don't know. No, Mom so said he said she said you give me a headache. You running my blood pressure. She says I think that's the, she. What she told me you're not the only one. And love goes wow, like yeah, like you drive us all crazy. Today. It's just you know here, here's the thing. Like her lines of questioning is just not what we're told in school. Like I I never seen a prosecutor ask questions like that. You're not even supposed to be asking leading questions like that unless they're a difficult witness. But it's just like, it's a repeat of the same. Ter like, I have never in my life seen a trial on this level where I can sit back and comfortably say I can do a better job. Like it's, it's, it's elementary school, first year law student, don't know nothing 
line of questioning. Well, Taylor, um, you do know Jeffrey Williams has peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, right? Taylor says, yes. You do know that jelly is on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, right? Yes. You do know that peanut butter is a part of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that Jeffrey has, right? Yes. You do know that Jeffrey Williams had peanut butter and jelly sandwich yesterday as a part of the peanut butter and jelly sandwich that we're accusing him of having today, correct? Like, shut up. He has peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yes or no? Sorry. <laughs> that's, Sorry. What I, that's what I look back and say, uh, Jeffrey, did you have peanut butter and jelly sandwich? <laughs> yes. And so Woody was like, you got a problem with Rich, with Rich Homie Kwan? Like, come on, why are you asking me that? I don't know. So, do y'all think that her line of questioning is not... See, I don't think she's dumb, stupid. I don't think she's oblivious. I think she's smart, but her tactics are now being seen to the world, and there's people that are smarter than her. That we're looking at this, not saying I'm smarter than her, but clearly I am at this point, but the way she goes about it, her witnesses, we know that her witnesses are not ready in order. She ain't got nothing together. So the fact, the way that we get annoyed because she's asking these questions in this manner, that's purposeful to extend the time because she knows there's only so much time in a day. That's why she be giggling when, how, how much long? She said 30 minutes. And her team look at her like 30 minutes. <laughs> And she, she just, this is her thing. This is, she's doing this purposely. And that's why it has to be stopped because you're wasting taxpayers money. There are people real lives behind jail or sitting in jail waiting to have their cases heard. But because this idiotic, <clears throat> this, this person chooses to drag this along for her own egotistical reasons People are literally dying because of her beliefs and the way she goes about her antics. I think that at first, all of us was, well, I can't say all of us, but me, I was excited to see what Woody would say on the stand. But now I'm I'm shifting my energy towards how Lil D will respond to this simply because I think the jury, it, this right here is going to be important to the jury to see how they went and got this young man from the hospital as he's struggling with his sickness. Like th that cannot go across to a jury in a, in a positive way because y'all could have left him alone and let him get well before you called him. But see, love tried to rush all her star witnesses, quote unquote, and then got fucked around every time. So I hope he get on there, give they asses a piece of his mind, so that the jury will know, like, sirs and ma'ams, I am sick as a as a dog. They pulled me out of the hospital to bring me up here. You know, like, it's, it, I'm really speechless, but I really hope he get up there and get a ass to motherfucking business. Listen, Nay, if you talk to your brother, tell him his leg hurt on Monday, he need a wheelchair. See, you need to pull the whole antics out. If they want to play antics, <laughs> we can play antics. I need a wheelchair. I cannot walk. How about that? And the crazy thing about it, like, Lil he got mental issues as well. So it's going to be hard because, like, a person already going to be mad, a person already in pain. Person, you already know you, he one of them people that won't hold his, he's not going to buy his son for nobody. Yeah. I hope he turn the knob right when he sit in the damn seat. Turn it all the way up because it's just, it's, it's so disheartening and, it's just why I don't understand. And, and that goes all the way back to the one man that they brought in as a witness. And I think that man had just had a heart attack or some sort. Like, I think he was a security guard at the mall. Like, y'all calling these folks. They can barely talk. They sick as fuck. Like, what are you doing? Lo um, love just like to go low. And that shit, I don't know. Like, don't the guy being said, the guy being said, um, I put this back in my past i moved on y'all got me on these vlogs and all that y'all assessing in my character I, i'm i'm gonna give me some action about this i'm saying i need some type of he said i'm gonna sue y'all about this but she doesn't even know that's her like witnesses that's weird like as a prosecutor you don't know your witnesses think about moon right normally in a prosecutorial setting what normally happens is you prep the client before you go up there the Starbucks meeting wasn't even about none of that. The Starbucks meeting was like, all right, let me feel you going to help me out or not. Like, what? You didn't bring anything from the go over? This is not about justice. It's about winning.
And that's, it's, it's just sad that they are playing with these boys' lives like this. Everybody lives. It, Cause, like, I don't think, I don't know if some people haven't been following the trial since the beginning. If you notice a pattern of all, and the thing is, these are not witnesses that the defense is called. These are the state's witness. And literally all of them have had a pattern of saying the same things that these prosecutors in the state are ruining their lives from stuff that happened like 10 years, over like 10 years ago. You guys are ruining my life from being. So I don't even know if people remember that Miss Bennett, who said she was sexually harassed by an investigator from the, the prosecutors, uh, the prosecution office. Um, I forgot even like the ones that was in jail that was just like, just take me back to jail. I don't even want to be here. And the list goes on and on from the beginning of the trial that all these witnesses are, have a pattern of saying the same thing from the treatment that they're receiving from the state so i hope the jury ha is paying attention to that because it's not a coincidence that all of them are saying the same thing and they don't even know each other you know it's just the the simple fact that she didn't know that that young girl well she knew that that young girl mother died she brought that up for no reason that's not relevant she didn't even know that Munk took mother passed away well she probably did but she wanted to be smart about that like, this is just undue harassment. And that's why I told you the rules of evidence, rule 611 says you cannot, you are in charge of examining of witnesses as a court. The, no one can harass or embarrass the witness. And just to tack on to her sleaziness, she definitely knew that Moon Tung Mother had passed because if you go back and watch it, she offered him condolences mm -hmm. the day before. And then the next day, she brings it up like, you know, what's the situation with your mother? Like, you knew that because you've already acknowledged it. Like, she's just a dirty, she's just a low-down dirty dog. Mm. It's just like Whitaker's allowing her to, okay, so if y'all don't know, you have direct examination, which is the prosecutor questions. Then you have something called cross-examination, where they get to cross on what they heard in direct. And then you have something called redirect. Well, Whitaker when I mailed you that book, uh, I circled a couple of things in there. You should look at that. You're not love should not be allowed to do another direct examination. She can only redirect on what she heard during cross. She's allowing that woman to get back up there and start redirecting the case again. That's not how it works. You don't get two bites at the apple. I don't know. Maybe Georgia doesn't require the rules of evidence. I, okay, That's I thought I was the only one that thought about that. I was like, she's starting a whole new line Case. of questioning. She's not responding to anything the defense says. She's just starting from scratch, like, screw all that. Let me re-ask my questions this way. <laughs> she was right. Uh, I seen her, but most when she wrote, a, she had wrote a whole three pages of more questions. I think what, she's, what Whitaker is doing is allowing, her mind is a pellet court. So she's probably like, I'm going to let them do this dumb shit. And if it comes back and they have to go to the appeals or appellate court, they'll automatically win. That's what I think Whitaker is doing. Like letting the letting the DA or the Fulton County embarrass themselves. See, but that's playing with these boys because why do we have to wait until an appellate court? We can get it right today. Appellate court okay. is not is nothing that starts next week. It takes months and years of stuff to get through appellate courts. We can do it today and you want to wait. Well, you take it up on appellate court. No, fuck you. We can take it up today. That's what I'm talking about, Whitaker. We can take it up today. We don't have to wait for the appellate courts. See, and that's what judges do. They try to protect their own record so their stuff don't get appealed in a narrow way. No, we can fix this today. We don't got to wait for appellate court. Yeah, I think Glanville's standpoint was the same fucking way. Appellate that's court, appellate court, appellate court. Something. But it's it's kind of arrogant, though, because it seems like in their mind, they have already made up that the jury is going to render a guilty verdict. And that's the part that's so un, like unsettling that they keep saying it like she's mirroring the same words as Glanville. And it's just like, why do y'all all, all assume that these guys are going they're guilty and the jury is going to come back with a guilty verdict? Well, I think they messed all that up because this jury is fatigued. This jury is tired. We are not even in court as long like as they're sitting in court. Right. But it's overwhelming them just the information and how they jump around 2013 15 21 18 and it's like there's no way that would be on a shadow of a doubt that they can just say guilty especially with the what's limited jury instructions there's like 10 15 of them at this point the, the, what they thought could have been a slam dunk is not that because of their own actions but not it's 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 even beyond that because at the end of 
this is what I think is going on, and and I, I'm telling y'all this is going to happen. So when it does happen, just come tell me I was right. The prosecution know they're losing. They want a mistrial. They're, they can't ask for one because it's political. So what's going to happen is they're going to confuse the jury to get a hung jury. That's how they get a retry at the, the apple. They're trying to do that on purpose. There's no way. If a RICO, what we learn in law school, is telling a story, this story is confusing. It's, it's, all, it's out of whack. It's not even in chronological order. You're doing this on purpose. You know it took for me to actually go through. I'm like, I'm not a lawyer. So like one of her recent posts, I want to say she put it around day 109, 117 ish. And she's like, this is the state's theory. And I, and I'm like, Oh, this makes sense. That's not what the hell I'm watching, but this makes sense. It's, it's ridiculous. There's, there's no way. And then you wonder why the defense is so effective. Like when they came up in, 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 in cross booty. Oh my God. It was, it was the synchronicity. You would have thought. We were watching them swim um, in the Olympics. Like it was, it was that good. Like it was straight to the point. Like they finished and we had a whole thought about maybe what, what, what had happened with, you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Donovan Thomas, Mr. So it was crazy, but whatever they're, they're showing right now is hell yeah, it's confusing them. I'm confused. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I can stop it and rewind. I'm just sitting there watching it in real time. Shout out to I am not a lawyer. See you down there, Mel. But um, she's in the chat. But yeah, it's why why did Max have to prosecute Woody? He actually prosecuted him. When? On 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 his cross. Mm, okay, I can see it, what you're saying. Yeah, he pretty much prosecuted Woody. I mean, got to fight for your clients. However, you got to fight for him. <laughs> and he lined him up good. And Love was so upset. Your Honor, objection. He's not asking a question because he's not he's not expecting him to answer. That's how cross is supposed to be. Bam, you did, didn't you? You did it, huh? You did it on this day? You did because you were mad, huh? That's how cross is supposed to be. Straight to the point. And it seems like they get to the point. It seems like um that that captures also the jury of the people's attention quicker. It's like you said this, is it that? Okay, you said this, is it that? Boom. But we have to hear, like you said, the backstory, the backstory to the backstory. And then you add all these other witnesses and then a 911 operate, all these different things. It's like, like you said, it's, it's a pie for a mistrial purposely. But that's what I'm, they're draining the jury on purpose. They're making them confused and overwhelmed. And then whatever happened this past week and, oh, the, the jury had something going on and just all this stuff. And it's like, this is tiring. This is draining. So I can only imagine the people that are actively involved in this case. And it's just, it's, it is a, it's a bad look on Georgia, if you ask me, because nobody's willing to step in. Yeah. And free the jury. Yeah. You know, this whole ex parte thing is, you know, from the eye of the law, ex parte is really nothing wrong with that. Per se. Sometimes you need ex parte meetings, right? Um, nay, they had, they had had an ex parte meeting to get a warrant for your brother. So we know that one occurred there. The problem is you're supposed to alert the defense that you met ex parte. That's the problem with that. That's secrecy now, right? That means that if, if no one told Steele, they came, they were going to go back in that court and act like nothing happened. That's when they fucked up. Exactly. Because everybody's looking around. I remember, I remember that day like it was yesterday. <laughs> it's such a memory. We're all sitting in the chat just waiting. We look at the hour later, two hours later. We're all like, um, okay. And then came in. He's just like, he's going to start. The, he wasn't even going to. The judge just sat down like nothing happened. Like it was just normal to start court three and a half, four hours later. Like, And it's his job to tell them. <laughs> it's his chambers. He needs to tell them if the state didn't, but he was so wrapped up in who told you, not about what it was about. Glenville, you get on my nerves. Sorry. Black and then, but they're like we said earlier, they're so blatant about it. It's like, it's like a you can't see me. <laughs> if that makes any sense, like they know the world is watching. Love does not like the cameras, and we can now see why she didn't want them there in the first place. But there's millions of people watching this case 
and they have these blinders up. Like you, you remember Big Daddy the movie? You put on those shades, and nobody can see me. It's kind of like that's how they're acting with their 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 ethics and the morals on just the way they're doing this, and the fact that we can all see it and most of us that are watching this case feel so helpless that there's nothing that we can do about it. Yeah. You know, that's why I wrote that letter. I feel like, you know, and it, it's so scary in Georgia that if we wanted to protest, I believe if we all gather at the courthouse to protest, they would hit me with a Rico. They would hit everyone. Like they did. Oh, we, I City. don't already try. I don't already try it. <laughs> they told us we've been out none of it. Yeah. That's a Rico. They they, similar to what you was about to say, Black, about I was about to say the cop city stuff that's going on. That's what I was about to say. That's exactly what they did. That is a Rico against protesters. Wow. But is that not our constitutional right to protest? Yeah. Yeah, I can tell y'all just from being here, just as a resident in Atlanta, when stuff like this breaks out, even going back to even like the protests for Palestine on like college campuses here in Atlanta, when I tell you the treatment that you receive for protesting, you are not going to get back. You're, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's really, really bad. You, it's, it's, it's kind of like almost like a lose lose situation. Um, because not only are you going to lose your freedom, they're going to lock you up. And then there is also going to the extent where they're trying to like prohibit like uh attorneys to like volunteer to you know sir, um represent you pro bono and things like that so it's like real wicked when it comes to protesting here in atlanta like, freedom, like are we i'm thinking like my thing is now we're going back we're going backwards like we don't have the such thing as freedom of speech anymore no and that's where it gets scary think about georgia just passed a law last year that is banning for judges not to give people cash bills. I mean, to give people cash bills only, you know? Like, you can't even get a ROR. You can't even get let out on a signature box. You know, you got to get a bail. Even if you fail you to appear on traffic ticket, give them a bail. Oh, wow. That's so disheartening. Yeah, that's so um, disheartening. I think- I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and so we were just all a part, a lot of us, because I used to get traffic tickets a lot. Um, there were so many lawsuits against our small um, municipalities that it opened up a, a class of action suit, and basically the new law is like, they are not allowed to, um, if you, if like, you've got like a low, like, traffic ticket or something, like, they're not allowed to arrest you, um, for failure to pay or something like that. Like they have to do other measures in order to get you to satisfy whatever punishment you're supposed to have because um, they targeted certain areas. And so like I randomly got a check in the mail for like $800. I'm like, what is this? And it was like, they paid me for every day that I had spent in jail. <laughs> Don't judge me uh, for traffic tickets. And it's just curious. Like I, I wonder how many people in Fulton County right now are sitting in jail. But dropping three, four, five miles over the speed limit and cannot get out. But it's you know, can we be fair though? All right, listen. Now everyone know I got an interview coming up on my podcast with Finding Wills, but I'm gonna let Finding Wills have it for just a couple seconds, okay? I think it's weird that Finny, you were issued a, a subpoena by the Georgia Senate and you failed to show up yesterday. But Nate, your brother was issued a subpoena and she orders him to get locked up. Like, I think that's weird. The locking up part is I want to make sure you get on my stand and testify. So, you know, there, hey, you come in here and you not give me what I want. We're going to lock him up. We're going to make him think about it, about playing with us. And I think that's what she, the same thing she did to Woody, put it over his head like, hey, you not going to do what I need you to do. I'm gonna like you. Well, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna let you think about it like a child. You know how how we do our church take everything. I'm gonna let you sit in your room and think about it. And that's but she out here dodging subpoenas. Like, come on. Never mind. and she playing with fire she not, too. She's not though. dodging that subpoena. She's enjoying her life. She's not dodging that subpoena. She's enjoying the whole campaign thing. Like yeah, her, um, sure. like the guys. Like I looked at the way she testified when she was on the stand. Oh, I ain't got to say that. I ain't the one on tr- um, trial here. Like, but you don't want these boys to speak. They want to say anything you want to see. Quick, yes or no. 
you don't want nobody explaining that. Oh, I'm gonna impeach him because he's not keeping his story life. And he ain't never keep her same story when she was on the stand either. Well, we know she uh, somewhere getting the Shannon Sharp treatment from Nathan Wade, so that's what she can find <laughs> out. And uh, I think I think that. I think that Fani bit off more than she can bite. Because why would you try and top profile cases at the same time? Like the math just didn't math me right there. Yeah. Like she lost me with it. Is it not? Is it? Is it not like three or four high profile cases she has going on right now? Because like, are, are, are um, we not considering the YFM case as well? I looked into yeah. that case as well. So you guys got it's like they were beefing with each other. But if you go look at the YFM indictment. It has nothing about, oh, I was beefing with, um, Shannon, or I was beefing with Yak, or I was beefing with the, their name is not in their indictment at all. Wow. Mm. And I just, somebody just sent that to me today. So I'm looking at, like, how are they beefing and they were going through this and that, but you're got their, their name in each one of your cases with these people, but they're not, they got these 10 people that's on this case, but you got 28 people on this case. It's not adding up. And then you look at that witness, they had like 10 witnesses and all their witnesses were police officers. But at the same time, it's like in the Rico indictment, one, the old, the overact thing is young Gotti, I mean, Yak Gotti sit, standing on um, someone's car. What does that, what does that mean? Cloud, it's cloud chasing. Like they're artists, cloud chasing. Right now, somebody could put something, they like cloud chasing. I'm going to drop a song, Nick, and then that will make your song go up. But she used it that as an overact, just like it's like a person, like it's, it's really personal to me, because it's not adding up. Even for their, like I looked at their indictment, you got um, what you call it, the Rico, the organization. She got that like seventy five times on their, on their indictment. That's crazy. Here's my thing too, though, because she's playing with fire, but. From what we saw from Doug Watson, it's supposed to say the first time she's done this. And so he, that's why, like, I'm on pins and needles about Quindarius because we know that she's willing to do this. And she's done this in a way where, you know, someone who needs medical attention or is, you know, a part of the vulnerable, vulnerable population has sat in Rice, you know, on Rice Street and has, you know, popped up in a lot. And so it just, like, it, it worries me. Like, like, that's like my concern. Like, I really pray that. He makes it through the weekend. Like, get him some Monday, get him in front of Whittier, and I hope that she recognizes that she was lied to, and that she says, okay, well, we're gonna let you go home, and just make sure you come back, because it sounds like, you know, just from the conversations that I've had with, you know, with you, your sister, and your dad, it sounds like you all were willing to show up. You all just weren't willing to have conversations prior to showing up, which might have been her issue. So I just really hope that she does the right thing, and that D makes it through the weekend. Yeah, like, Miss Lowe, everybody done seen your test, test, like, who want to talk to you? Who actually want to sit there and have a conversation with you? She got to stop playing, these, playing with these men. Because that's what she's doing. She's just trying to play with them. And it's so bold of somebody to play with somebody while the world is watching. And she thinks it's funny. That laughter, that blows my gasket. She'll say something and then laugh and just... Like, these people's lives are on them. You've taken, first of all, two years off of a couple of them lives already by having them in here with no bond. And then you and the judge giggling back and forth? Like, what is this, brunch? Not just her laughing. Whitaker, too. Like, when Whitaker be making her little side comments and thinking and giggling, like, it kind of irritates me because it's just like, bro, what's funny? Like, it's nothing funny about this, these matters at all. Like... <laughs> Witnesses don't have to speak with her before testifying if they don't want to. That is true. That's true. So for her to use the subpoena in that way, it's inappropriate. And I just want to say something. I I was going to just stay below and listen, but I feel like if I don't say this, I'm going to hate myself. I am an attorney, and I just want to say that I hate what's happening to your brother. I really do. That really been, it's been on my mind all day. And I, I heard a couple people say, um, something about black people and jobs or when we get good jobs. I want to say that that's not true. Like, don't let Fonnie and DA Love make you feel like 
when black women get these jobs that this is how we all act because that is not the case they do not represent the way we are in these positions i know plenty of black attorneys women attorneys who are instrumental in doing the opposite of what they're doing in atlanta and what they're doing is is really makes me sick i'm actually <laughs> thinking about quitting my corporate job because what's going on in Atlanta. So there are people like us who really do care. And I just felt it's really important to say that because we all do not think the way that they do and we don't act the way that they do. And I don't want that narrative to be the one that gets put out there because there are people who really do care Like I said, I thought about quitting my job three times today when I heard about what they did to him. So I just really felt like it was important to say that. We we definitely appreciate that. I definitely appreciate you. As a black woman, I appreciate you saying that. Me too. Thank you. Don't quit your job. (laughs) Not just quit my job, but quitting my job to change my practice to criminal defense because of what's going on down there. That's the case. Quit your job, girl. I'm playing. No, I'm I was just about <laughs> to say, listen, I mean, we do like, I'm not going to lie. Like, out, a lot sorry. of people do need more defense attorneys and like affordable, like these, it's, I see a lot of people like, they don't know what they're reading. They're not knowing what they're looking uh, at. No, I they forgot. just like, hey, I'm thinking I'm out of jail. Sweating. Like, if I don't get out of jail, they are already gonna make me sit in here. I got children. I got a mother that's worried. Like, anything possible. It's like even reforming. Like, just learn reform the guys. Like, help them out. Help them actually get a job they can, so they won't have to be on the corner. Help them actually get a job they can feed their kids, pay up a couple of bills. I swear, like Georgia would be much better because the only thing you see in these guys is trying to figure out a way to get some money. You put them in all this jail, they can't get a job. Nobody's going to hire honestly, a person that sells rules or anything else. Honestly, for real, y'all should go talk to a civil attorney after this. Like, if I was your family, as soon as he gets off of that stand from testifying, y'all should go straight to a lawyer and sue the city. Because yeah. there's no reason to use the subpoena in that way. They knew he was in the hospital. And to the extent... I'm not trying to say, (laughs) let me do a disclaimer. I'm not saying this is what happened, but to the extent that what they did made his injuries worse, that is a lawsuit in my opinion. So to the extent that is what happened, I would go immediately to consult with a lawyer on that. Just his civil rights has been violated, but that's a whole other subject. Thanks, BB. Thanks, BB. Somebody's been waiting a little while. I'm getting to everyone, sorry. I know it's a couple of you guys, but another lawyer. Oh, hey. Can you guys hear me? Yep. It's yeah. my first time ever doing a spaces um meeting Welcome. or whatever. Uh thanks for having me. So, yeah, I'm not, I don't actively practice anymore, but I did for some years. And I saw that, um, Lil Deast, a family member was, um, in the chat. And so I'm, I'm sure, yeah, okay, so sister, yeah, I'm sure she'll be in communication with him at some point. My only, um, the only thing I wanted to add is, um, Lil D has no obligation to the state. He's not under indictment. Um, and I think that's where like Woody fell short. He was ill advised from his previous counsel in terms of si- signing the immunity deal, which, uh, which that's how he was, he lost his uh, fifth amendment, right? Because he's thinking, you know, I can go, okay, if I have immunity, I can say whatever and I'm good. But the thing is, that's why they encourage him to say, I don't recall, because once you say, I don't recall, then they can then refresh your recollection and that's all they needed him to say in order to enter those uh tapes or recordings and and things of that nature so i would not like like little d to make that 
I wouldn't say it was a mistake because Woody knew how to finesse to create a, an extensive amount of reasonable doubt. But um, to avoid that problem, if they try to push an immunity deal in front of his face, he should not sign that because then he's going to forego his his Fifth Amendment right. So he he wants to hold on to his ability to just say, I plead the fifth. So that way they won't be able to introduce any recordings that they have. So what is she like? She telling him that she's not going for the fifth. Like. Yeah, because she's going to get immunity. Because in Georgia, they can just go to a judge and get immunity. That's what they did to Kim Copeland. Kim Copeland got the agreement after they granted the immunity. Yeah, I was going to say, he didn't sign anything. No, he didn't sign anything. Sign you don't have to do it in Georgia. No. Oh, so... In Georgia, you don't have, that doesn't even make any sense to me. That's yeah, why I say you don't have he to. Told, he told them all week, I'm pleading the fifth, I'm pleading the fifth, I'm pleading the fifth. Friday morning comes, the judge, Love has sent something to Glanville. Glanville came in and said, hey, you have use immunity or whatever the immunity was. They forced that on him. He didn't ask yeah. for it or anything of that nature. He didn't sign anything. Yeah. They literally forced it on him. They, yeah, the Georgia statute says that if the officer of the state, Fannie Willis, agrees that his testimony is needed, then she can request immunity and the judge signs the the order. That's why they let him know that he had immunity. He didn't need to sign it. Now, uh-huh. normally, a prosecutor should be negotiating the immunity agreement right. with his counsel. Right. That's how it should work ethically, but I don't think that ethics in Fulton County is different it- things, I think. Yeah. Okay, and then to that question, the only way he could have got out of it was just to sit in jail. And the reason why they was trying to say it was coercion because they were saying that he, because he, you remember Woody was ready to go take his bid and go sit until the end of the trial. And the only reason why they actually got him to testify, even with that immunity deal, was saying, "Oh no, you're not going to sit in jail until the end of this trial, but it's going to be until the other ones." Basically, however long you know. I can say you're going to sit in jail, which was yeah. wrong. So in this, in this case, they can give him an immunity deal, but if he still like opts to like, okay, I'm still going to not testify. I'm not taking no deal. I'm just going to go sit in jail. He has that. He has the obligation to do that. Correct. Yes. Be- and, and, and that's where the Woody thing is. They, they actually lied to him saying, well, it's to all the defendants under the indictment. That's not true because there hasn't been a judge assigned to, to that. So to cure your contempt, there has to be a judge to hold you in contempt. If there's another trial, there's no judge assigned to that case. That's where it gets tricky. And, and that's so, what Whitaker said. So now um, they have been running the other case that I think the guys like in trial the other day. I think a judge was talking to them. I think Roscoe was going back and forth with the judge and he was telling the prosecution seemed like they need to have their stuff together. It's a black guy. So if they're starting their case now and he say, hey, I don't want to talk to nobody into the case of will they make him stay into the end? No, no. Because I, I think there's just a judge. I think there are senior judges because they're just managing that case. They haven't mm-hmm. picked a jury. Wadir hasn't started yet. So there's really no official judge over that case. But Whitaker said that and how when she, uh, I would call it half-ass clarified, when she clarified to Woody, she said, just to the end of this case, by law, they did a whole little back and forth argument about it, that it was to the end of this specific RICO case. Not all the extra people that are off the case and everything. It was just this case. And the way she explained that to him, to me, was confusing. Just like she, uh, I feel like, purposely did the word salad towards the jury when she was explaining to them those rules that she didn't adequately or articulately explain to them. Um, it's, 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 it's interesting. Yeah. And, and that's where my other concern comes in because he's not medic even if that is the route that they choose to take, like he's not medically fit to do that. He yeah. he can't he's not gonna be able to to, to sit in there for an extensive period of time without seeing a physician or being under, you know, a, in a situation where he's gonna be able to get that, that type of treatment that he, he just he just had. Because if I heard right, I heard Nate say that he can eat something and get sick. And so just sitting in those conditions and he's our and I don't wanna it sounds like he's he's still kind of recovering because he kind of still has something. I don't want to put stuff out there, but I I just I can't see that being a, even a viable option for him. So it's like, what do we do? What can we really do to make sure that he's okay? Right. So someone posted in the chat that um, when a um, a material witness is in some in some type of um, medical dire state. 
there um, there can be emotion filed on their behalf, emotion to quash, um, for them to to have to speak or for them to have to testify because they have to prioritize the health of the of the witness over the need for their testimony. The thing is, the state doesn't care about his health; they care about getting extracting certain information from him just so they can introduce certain evidence because they won't be able to in- introduce certain evidence without him saying certain things on the stand. That's all they care about. So like if he even utters something and he just, God forbid something happens to him while he's on the stand, as long as he already said it while he's after he's been sworn in, they, they have, they've laid the foundation to be able to introduce certain evidence. And that's all they care about when that's unfortunate and very disheartening. So if he say, hey, I want to plead the fifth, I don't want to mean I want to plead the fifth, they won't be able to make him say anything or do anything there? Right. If he pleads, if he's able to plead the fifth, they won't be able to introduce the evidence they're trying to introduce. Yeah. But if he says, I don't recall, then they will be able to introduce but oh, okay, but so that's the tricky part. But in the right. state of Georgia, they can still force the immunity on him. And if yeah, the, yeah. if he says right. that he wants to plead the fifth, that's what love is gonna. Do. Hey, everybody, um, my phone is about to die, so I just wanted to give a couple of recommendations to everybody. Thank you, Black Law Student, for doing this. Um, no Miss Nay, there is. Um, I'm not uh, an attorney. I'm just a a black woman that reads law very comprehensively, and I fought my own cases here in Texas and won on several occasions. You guys can file a motion to quash, but what I recommend that you do tonight and tomorrow, get in touch with his medical providers and have them give you statements of his medical conditions and get documents that he was just released. In addition to that, there are several several justice organizations in Atlanta that you guys can start calling tomorrow on behalf of his civil rights. The Georgia NCP opens up at 9 o'clock tomorrow. See, I'm a person of action. I would be all over that prison right now and going to get doctors. If you can get somebody to help you write the motion to quash for a and back it up with the medical documentation while somebody else in your family is Googling all of these non-for-profit justice to see who will ask for the phone. Because if you get in touch with Georgia, which is the state NAACP, they will contact somebody in Atlanta in the Fulton County. And if more than one person call, I promise you, you'll get um, some attorneys. In addition to that. Okay, can you DM me, please? Ma'am. Can you DM me with all this, please? I can, honey. Yeah, you can call me if you want to, and we can go through a yes, list. Yes, yes. Okay. But I'm I'm just a person of action, and I don't depend on any. And that's one thing that I want to tell everybody. Don't feel helpless. Start reading the law for yourself. Because let me tell you something. If we get a motion together, and it's emailed to Whitaker tonight, you have morning. She has to address every motion that comes across her desk. And as long as this backed up with a solid medical background, they have to address it. You know, here's another thing, right? This goes back to what I sent Whitaker through Amazon, the Federal Rules of Evidence. Exactly. Rule number 804-5. The rule (laughs) requires the court, I'm reading verbatimly from my book, requires the court to assess a person's emotional, physical, and mental health before testifying. And if black law student will give us all of the legal ease that he just because baby, I need it. I just want a $250,000 case against an attorney here in Texas and I wrote all of it up myself. We got this. And here's another thing. Here's another thing. They asked you right before you, when they swore, after they swear you in, if you're under the influence of any drugs or alcohol. Yes. And because he's recently released and given his condition, I'm sure there are some 
type of drug, some uh, prescription. Um, well, this so, is discharge papers should have instructions that he's not be able to, the state is probably not going to comply with. He probably needs to go to a follow-up appointment. You got a blood transfusion. He had a you know, blood it's, it's, transfusion, it's, but if you can get the statement from his primary care physician and his attending physician from when he was just released from the hospital as coupled to that motion to quash, they got to address it. Well, here's the thing, and I'm going to say this, and I think Ms. Davis and um, I can't see the other name, Ms. Byron, for coming up. But here's the thing. Fulton County plays dirty, and I'm going to tell you why. I remember when I'm reading this rule of evidence here, you're also not supposed to testify under the influence of no drugs or, or alcohol. Glenville allowed somebody, I forgot his name. He was high. Yeah, we say, oh, it was Adrian Bean. We say, I'm Adrian so high Bean's right now. Said, high yeah, now. he said his mouth was dry. He needs some water because he's high. <laughs> high and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, who they was literally, it? They literally glanced over that because they didn't even, he, he didn't even respond to that. Yes. Fulton County is very corrupt, but so is Texas. That's why you have to arm yourself to be able to address the law in your constitutional rights. But also, don't leave out the NAACP Reform for Justice of Atlanta. There's another one called... Um, the ACLU? The ACLU. ACLU. Like, if we all start calling them tomorrow, um, if, if you guys really saying that you want to do something, get on the phone. Let's start calling them. Giving yes, them guys. Giving I, them know, I have called them before, like, when the trial first started. It's hard to get them, like, I need more than just 20 people with me to get them to do something. Yes, that's that's what I'm saying. It's like a hundred and some people on, on this space. Oh, I think you can definitely get more than a hundred people. Like, Ms. on Ms. Sylvia's live, there, there were hundreds of people on her live that, like, was... She was advocating to donate to the GoFundMe and was able to reach the $5,000 goal. Um, yeah, so Miss Sylvia, she was one of the ones like they was at the table with them. I was um me and my friend, we did a petition, we got them to actually do it and she helped us with it, but they still didn't make a move with us. So I think it's more than us with like Big Jeff, um, Thugger Daddy there. I was on the phone, Miss Sylvia, Gay Gotti's mother, and we all was just trying to just show them how unfair it was then. That was in uh I think 20, yeah, 22. Well, now that we have videos that they can go look at, and I'm sure they've heard about this, but there's a lot of more organizations in Atlanta. In addition to that, do you know who your council people are? Have you guys started reaching out to them? Um, No, not yet. Because I know last time we tried, it's a lot. They be wanting now. It's just a lot to retain somebody. So if we could just retain somebody and just see what how much they'll charge. We just gotta deal with. So here's the thing, though, as far as as money is concerned, because I know a lot of people were saying, oh, like certain attorneys, you know, five thousand wouldn't be enough, or this amount wouldn't be enough. So this he's not on trial. Lil D is not on trial. So he doesn't need an attorney to represent him throughout a trial. He just needs someone to consult with that has his best interest at heart that will uh advise him um correctly and 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 let him know exactly what is in his best, best interest. interest yes and, and so that doesn't cost that much yes like this you know what i mean like you can get somebody for i mean five thousand dollars to i'm I, I don't see him i don't foresee him being on the stand um, as long as Woody was on the stand, um, and even if he were, that wouldn't that wouldn't cost a significant amount or the the amount that people are assuming it would cost. You know, well, like so. I agree with you if it was yeah. a normal trial, but this is an unfair trial. Yep. So you, you yeah, know, we can't assume <laughs> yep. that there's going to be fairness and, that was, and, and anybody ethics. want to deal with Miss Love, Miss yeah. Willis, or Miss Hilton? Like, right, and, right. In a fair <laughs> trial, you wouldn't need a lawyer, but this is the unfair trial. Right. So you don't need a lawyer. You know, and here's the thing. It's it's beyond that because I don't feel comfortable seeing him up there. So I know, you know, without some type of representation. Normally in the criminal justice system, you can say, you know what, we'll just have the court appoint I don't even trust Whitaker appoint nobody for your brother. No. Do you see how quick she she knew Woody attorney 
was barred that morning. When Woody brought it up, then all of a sudden she had somebody already on speed dial. See, that's playing with people. And mm-hmm. I feel like mm-hmm. that appointed attorney did a poor job of advising Woody as well. Absolutely. I think he did a very poor job of um, advising him. But, I mean, it's only so much you can do when your hands are tied. He he works with the state. They work in the same building and the same offices every day. So that's why it's always not advised to to get in in cases as serious as, as this to get a um a court appointed as one or a public defender. They all but work also, together. But he might be be on the stand long because I think Woody implicated your brother in his testimony, didn't he? I think he said he got information from your brother. Yes, yes he did. So we got to, they're going to retry Woody stuff with your brother. This is why it's critical for your brother to get a lawyer because they because everything. They're gonna retry him. Yes. They're gonna bring back Mutu. They're gonna like. They're gonna try to paint in. Well, Everything they, Woody say he didn't together. recall, and Woody yes. say he got from him. He, they're gonna try to bring it. They're gonna retry Woody with Little D. But then the other thing is, which Little D is he is he speaking of when he's he's speaking of Little D, right? No, it, I think no, she, she actually like, clarified no, she, it. Yeah. yeah, she clarified which one. Which one is yeah, it? Was, little D yeah, from was, Cleveland. Was, little D from Mechanicsville, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah. And then there's, it's also come out that, that, um, there are some ties with Lil D from Mechanicsville with, uh, Detective Gaither, um, and their, their personal relationship. Like that, all of that corruptness is absolutely asinine to me. I, I can't even wrap my mind around why this trial is still going on as we all are like, what is, what is this? This is, is this legal? It's not. But yeah, nobody that, ever has the balls to come against in like the the government, you know what I mean? Um, usually, but under these circumstances, I feel like there's strength in numbers, and if we all do come together, there is something that can and eventually will be done if enough people file complaints and make phone calls and and show up and show out against the state i mean we're not the, this is a, a group of just a few hundred people but there's people watching this trial all across the world and everyone okay. can see everything that we're seeing and speaking about and our tiktok um just a, a few creators that i know like it has reach like i've seen up to three thousand people get on the live and so if we need to pull together to say these are the numbers that we're going to call tomorrow morning everybody call this number like, I feel like that's something that we can organize tomorrow and say, this is what we're going to do to help him because everybody's asking, what can we do? What can we do? We can use our platform. We can, we can, we can, we can, we can get it out there. Um, so it, well, I think it needs to be targeted. Like if you're going to do something like that, where it's going to be organized, it has to be actually that organized because everybody can be calling a, a bunch of different um outlets and organizations because it's going to be so scattered that it's going to create confusion and you mm-hmm. want to you want to keep some organization involved in cuz that would be more effective in my opinion so if there are just let's say three organizations locally that that civil organizations that this is what they're this is what they work on. These are the type of cases that they, they seek out to, to help out the, these, uh, this, un, uh, uh, resolve these adjustments, these uh, injustice, then we have to be, able, we have to be targeting the same organization. So if you put out, like, if somebody just put out in the chat or in the, um, in the comments, here is a list of three top three organizations. And hey, everybody give these organizations a call advocating on on the behalf of the injustice that's in, occurring dur- uh that has been occurring from the inception of this of this debacle um then i think that that would be a more targeted approach instead of just saying hey guys call an organization and everybody's calling a uh, hundred different organizations but that wouldn't be very targeted and i don't think that would be very fun. i'm calling the governor's office I how feel... about that oh shit he ain't gonna get no you gotta do it you have to do I what honestly... people do you gotta make the governor unplug his phone because this is his state if you're if this is the message you want to send Unplug your phone. I want to call the governor's phone until it, it's. I'm scared of that. Is Fanny working with the governor? 
But they're going to start tapping our phone. No, they're going to start tapping our phone. They're going to add us to the Rico tribe. Right. (laughs) They ain't got enough room. In in, in this case of all the chaos that already is, I understand exactly what you're saying, Abina, but I feel like a little... It, this is a sense of urgency right now because the, the the reason we're calling tomorrow is to get a lawyer for little D, right? So a little, the way social media works and the way everything works these days, a little organized chaos can cause a bigger, because if everybody's calling, people are going to start, they'll, even if they hadn't heard of it before, they're going to be like, what the hell? You know, everybody's calling us the organization. People are trying to figure out what's going on. It's going to make one, it's going to be go a boom because people need to this needs more attention than the time we have available. We have over just over 24 hours to make this make sense. But also to her point, uh, black, like with like time matters. If you think about when you said black, if you get on the phone and talk to the governor, y'all got to remember, even though Atlanta is black and Democrat ran, the governor and all of their supporters are behind this whole Trump. And all of these supporters in the state of Georgia hate Fonnie for her going after Trump. So if you don't think that some of them may be in their best interest to do anything to attack her and make her look less credible than she already is, oh, they're going to be on board with it. That's Absolutely. why everybody they has on the used this trial to, to kind of further that agenda against her. So they probably will get on board. <laughs> and I just want to say this and put this out in the atmosphere. I've said it on a couple of spaces that we had this week. I don't want anyone to think that this is going unnoticed for this state because I sat in in Henry County's court on Monday and there were inmates there that have YSL attorneys and or has Melnick as a as an attorney and they can't get shit done and they're stuck there because this is going on. So across the board in Georgia, I'm sure that all the court systems are like, what the fuck? And it's, it's, this is not a good look for the state of Georgia, more or less than Fulton County, but you're affecting people everywhere from the top of Georgia to the bottom of Georgia. And it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I'm hoping that, you know, legislation time and voting time, I know it ain't like political stuff for the spaces, but we got to get out and make action. I'm not in Fulton County anymore, but still, the stuff is affecting all of the metro area counties. You're absolutely correct. You're, you, you are not, you're not wrong at anything you're saying. And we that's it. Has to be we the people. The we the people have to change this case because waiting on somebody to sit back and be like, hey, look, nobody's going to step up if we don't step up. Yeah. So I'm going to get the information for the governor. So we, you know, because listen, pressure got, got to be pressure, you know. And I get it, right? I just hope we apply pressure. That's what I want is the pressure to be applied to to them. Because granted, right? My grandmother taught me this. You can't you can't win an evil game with evil people. Right, and we need pressure. We need pressure. <laughs> they don't play, so that's just be the scary part. Like I wanna step in and just do so much and me be like, oh, Baby, you used to shop bills 10 years ago. Let me see what I need to do for you. Like, oh, my God. Yeah, I'm going to drop the governor's phone number. We're going to call that office, and we're going to keep calling until he explodes. Like, who the fuck is calling my office? Because it takes somebody beyond Fulton County to, to say, you know what? This is enough. I don't know. That yeah, goddamn governor we got so damn easy. wishy-washy. I don't know. Like, he added with Trump, but then at the same time, you know, funny situation. I don't know. Our governor is trash, and that just go along with all the other laws that's been in place, so I don't know. I don't know. Well, he he passed a law to hold prosecutors a, a accountable. There you go. Good opportunity. What is that doing at this point? <laughs> Here, but here's the funny thing. He passed a law who was the first person to sue him? Finally, Funny, yeah. Who was the judge that heard that that case? Judge Whitaker. That's what I'm saying. Bingo. Bingo. That's what I'm saying. And so if, if um, and I'm, and I'm apologize, I don't remember her name. If she sends y'all something and you wanna y'all wanna collab, we come up with maybe one or two places plus the governor's office, um, and we kind of get it organized and say tomorrow morning tomorrow afternoon or early evening we could get on live we can connect with the other creators uh, on live we talk about what our game plan is for you know 
either you know that evening or Monday morning. Like, you know, if we say we're gonna we're gonna call all day. Yep, yeah, you know we take like this this group. Or, you know, depending on how how we want to split it up, right? Because all of us have followers. So you know, if we all go live independently and it's three numbers, three three different creators. My, you know, my group was calling this, my group is calling this, my group is calling that. I mean, you've got at least a few hundred people calling a number. You know what I mean? So if, if we want to take action, like I'm, I'm all game. I'm, I'm down for it. Just let us know what you want us to do. Time for us to apply that pressure, y'all. We, we got 24 hours. I'm ready. I'm following everybody now, so who, however you guys started, so y'all can be able to DM people. Because I know sometimes if you're not following a person, you probably can't DM them. Yeah, I got this Jefferson's number. I've got Mel's number. Uh, not this Melanie. I'm not a lawyer, but hey, girl. Um, but Melanie, the other male who's on TikTok, I got her number. Um, I think somebody's got Smack number. Like, we can, we can figure it out. No, for sure. I'm willing to do whatever we, we have to do, but we have to, we just got to do it. And that's what it comes down to, man. We just have to do it and get it done. Cause you know, justice will never be served until those who are unaffected are just as outraged as those who are affected. That's how we fix justice. Because this is not about little D. It's about every boy. Future, unborn, born, this is what it's really about. It's not about your, it's beyond your brother. If they do it to him, <laughs> they'll do it to anybody, I promise you. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's for a lot of our future boys that don't know no better, who don't want to listen to their mothers, single parent homes. That I said, it's about our youth now, it's about our communities, cause it's been going on way before D, so I want to help everybody. Yeah, whatever we gotta do, we're gonna do it. Um, I don't know, there's like three other people that wanna come up. I just wanna get these people out the way because they've been waiting the whole night, but then we're gonna wrap this up. I see IG, you wanna say something? So, not what happened, sorry. Um, boss man. Boss man. Like a uh, black lawyer, why don't mm -hmm. you write the motion? Uh, I can't legally write motions. I'm still in law school, but I, well, I can write it. I, I just can't submit it for sure. Right. Just, you know, put your knowledge in there and relay it to his sister. And my question is about the whole uh, Instagram thing. Like, is there anything they could do about it? Like, would it be in private cars or whatever? You know, a lot of this evidence stuff, and that's why I go back to the rules of evidence. The rules of evidence always says the the court. This is Whitaker's job to allow and not allow this stuff in. I just don't understand why she's allowing it. I wrote her a very detailed letter. She because did get she it. attempted she to act it. oblivious to it. You know, she was like, well, we don't really know how it works. And, <laughs> and I don't know. That that's the problem. So then, therefore, we need to bring in somebody that works with Instagram, not like, you know, or uh, somebody that works, you know, with them in their little office and, and actually be able to say this is that. Because if no one, including the prosecutors or the defense or the judge, seemingly are saying we don't know how it actually works, we don't know if this is a, a private video or a story or this, then how can you even bring it into evidence? And you don't even know you don't even know where it came from. Yeah, you know, just the thought of you have a, I'm sorry to pick on this guy, an affinity expert, quote unquote, oil change guy testifying about a blurry picture. Y'all even showed him the wrong picture. Like, come on, like this, this has to stop. Please stop, Whitaker. You still get on the Supreme Court, but not on the back of these black boys. Please, please stop. You can still get on the Supreme Court, but not on the back of these men. Find another way, baby. Find somebody else to do it. All right, listen, guys. Taylor, final words. I know we're about to wrap up. I know we need to get together. Everyone needs to get together so we can get this information out. I'm going to adopt Taylor as the president of this movement. I'll say I. Just put I in the chat. 
Right. Okay, all good. That, that heart was um, my eye. The heart. <laughs> no worries. Um, like I said, Nate, whenever you get the information, you can share it. We can do some research. Um, I can do some research. Whatever you and Tori want to do, um, we can figure it out. I can get in contact with the other creators, and then we'll post about it. So if you aren't already following me, um, Taylor Umbridge on uh, TikTok, because that's what that's you know that's where my largest reach is gonna be. It to be honest. Um, sure. Make sure you follow me. Make sure you follow Mrs. Jefferson says, and make sure you follow Melanie, uh, because uh, the three of us will definitely be communication about what we're gonna do, and we'll sh- strategically come up with a plan and get it communicated out. We'll try to be as organized as possible, as organized um, and direct as possible, so that we're not all over the place. For sure, let's do it. Nay, any final words? We, I'm going to post. I already posted the GoFundMe. Um, I don't know if Taylor, you communicate to her what I want to do for her. I don't want it publicized, but I'll take care of that. Um, yeah. No, I, I didn't say I didn't. I didn't. So if you want to hit me up, I think yeah. that'll be more appropriate. Yeah, uh, sure. I'll I'll talk to you, Nay, on on the back end. <laughs> All right, thank you guys so much. Let's let's make this happen. Yeah. Thank you for coming up, Nay. We appreciate it for sure. Yeah, Have we can help it. your brother. We're we're you you got a whole squad of people behind y'all, so just know that. Yeah. He's not alone. Let him know that for sure. Okay. Thanks. Thanks everybody. Follow everybody here. Follow Taylor on Twitter. Follow Empress on Twitter. Follow Sweet Nay on Twitter. You know, I'm glad y'all stopped by to co-host this spaces with me for sure. I really appreciate that. Thank you for having me. I'm a nobody, so I appreciate, you know what I'm you saying? Somebody. <laughs> My commentary, but no, for sure, I appreciate everything. All right. All right, guys, everyone have a beautiful night. Stay safe. We'll get the information out to you guys, and we'll be there on Monday. I think I'm going to catch a flight down to Fulton County on Monday. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to fly into the courthouse. I had a schedule. I was going to be down there next week anyway, so I'm definitely going to fly in this week. Nice, nice. Good night, right. everybody. All right, guys. Good night. Be safe. Love you guys.